Did you say switching in now? I should have done a count talk. You're not wrong. Well, it's too late now. <laughs> so we're we're live. <laughs> oh yeah, in. absolutely. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I was starting to... in. I don't care. <laughs> Look, I've never been in video production. The thing is that, like, I need to switch over to live when the when the previous movie ends. And I don't know when yeah. is three seconds before that. So I just okay. got my cursor hovering over the transition button, and then when everything goes uh -huh. black, I say, no, and uh -huh. press it. All right. Okay, okay. Uh, I'm sorry, I'll, I'll beat him with a stick when we're done. <laughs> I'll do my like, I'll asleep. get back on training him better. That's I've lost control. Bet. I've lost control of this thing. Hey, everybody. How's it going? <laughs> Welcome to Non-Standard Action, Episode 5, Speed Trap. I am your host, Seth, also known as Mistaken Potatoes or Tates. Call me whatever you want. Jerk. Jerk works just fine. With me, I have the half-orc soldier that won't fight before his soldiers, Garuk. Hello. She's pale and she's small, but with her friend, she knows it all. It is Mouse and Serendipity. Good morning. Okay, I gave room for serendipity that time, but she didn't show up. He's big, he's a lizard, and he's part entropic wizard. It's Ninden. Hello. And the Riforian mystic who's got the quick fix, Kaylin. I'm still not entirely sure what I'm fixing. These these losers? Wounds. Is that, yeah, is that who I'm wounds. fixing? Oh, Usually okay. It would be wounds. Yeah, and... they do tend to get themselves in trouble like that. And Harald's here. Hi, Harald. Hi. <laughs> and Harald is here. The rest. <laughs> and and miscellaneous I, pre I present to you the rest. <laughs> How's everybody doing this fine Sunday morning? I'm good. Doing I was hoping we could just morning? talk more about horror games like we were yesterday. Oh, yeah, you wanted to talk about just Silent Hill. No, well, from the yeah, perspective so of someone who's never played guys. it. Just yeah, Silent Hill. Would anybody <laughs> mind if we just, like, talked about Silent Hill for a couple hours? Like, you know, who wants I, to play I mean, Starfinder? I mean, I would. I would oh. mind. I, I, I would mean, mind. I mean, my mom was kind of hoping to see us play some Starfinder. Oh, oh that's nice. nice. Hi, Mom! Hi, hi Nick's Mom. Hi, Nick's if Mom. Hi, Mrs. Nick's Mom. I the Nick's link mom. I sent her. <laughs> hello, mi hello, Mrs. Nick's mom. <laughs> uh, do not call. Classic. My mother is not a, a Mrs. She's a feminist. Thank you. She oh, so not even not even a Ms. Hi, Miss Nick's mom. Oh, hello, hello <laughs> st strong empowered woman. Yes, strong empowered woman, Nick's mom. <laughs> is that a valid prefix? <laughs> First of her name, mother of dragons, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, I mean, Rose is sort of a dragon. Yeah. Good. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Let's go back to Starfighter stuff. <laughs> so yeah, uh, thank you everybody for joining us. Uh, I hope you're having a good morning. Uh, wanted to address something that happened towards the end of uh, last episode last week. Uh, we started to have some sort of audio issue. We're not really sure what happened there. Uh, we went through all the stuff on our end and found nothing wrong. Um, uh, Streamlabs specifically. Uh, did not report any dropped frames or anything. So there was just some sort of odd audio anomaly. Uh, so I just wanted to tell everyone that we are going to do our best to make sure that does not happen again. Also, uh, if you are listening live and you hear something like that going on, please let us know immediately so we can investigate, uh, so we can not record 40 minutes of choppy audio. Uh, if you hear something, say something, basically. I, I entreat thee, please. Um, we we will yeah. give you points for the for the for the Discord store that is currently closed due to some tarantulas. Indeed, I think Patrick's right. I think it was actually a glitch gremlin. There was supposed to be a glitch gremlin in the last episode, but I cut him out because I thought it was goofy. And, and uh, obviously, they attacked. Yeah, our taking and vengeance. That. that was that was my fault. Unlike sun tarantulas, never... which are the most real threat that we've ever encountered. Oh man, They're definitely you know, real. Whenever you I say sun say tarantula, I, I always think about sun spiders. Are you familiar with those things? No, Solid I think about sun chips. Oh, sun chips. I don't think I ever think about sun chips. Garden salsa. You are sun missing chips, out, man. my friend. <laughs> no, Except I mean like, sponsored by sun chips. 
Harvest and cheddar. Not, sorry, I miss sun chips. That is one of those things that you cannot you cannot replace when you can't do gluten. Oh, okay. I was gonna ask if they just don't have them up in the frozen north, but no, that's no. They're uh, made of wheat, man. Oh man, that's terrible. That if you like sad. sun chips, I suppose. I take it back. Sun, sun chips. chips are garbage. <laughs> Honestly, on the li on the tier on the tier of chips, pretty low tier, low tier chip. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe like I mean, C or D tier. There's baked ruffles, um. And then sun chips are like my second favorite. Doritos are like garbage tier. <gasps> that oh. is fighting okay. words. Okay, okay, okay. Right. We no, gotta, we gotta stop. Thing. We gotta stop. No, no, no. Yeah, we gotta this stop. Is this is gonna spiral out of control, <laughs> and, and we're just gonna be yelling about chips, and and that's not what this stream is about. And our viewers are gonna be like, no, f these guys. <laughs> oh, look, yeah, Patrick already said it. Oh boy, f this episode. <laughs> Thanks, right. Patrick. We love you. Right. Thank you. Right. Do you mean F this episode is in prank this episode or F as in pr press Yeah, that F should to be P respects. this episode. P yeah. for prank. No, no, no. I think he means F to, to pay respects. Anyway. Oh, God. Oh. It is. But it's still, it still checks out. Anyway, you guys want to play some Starfinder? Yeah, all right. Okay. I guess. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. All right. Very much. I, I'll go ahead and start up some music and I guess if somebody wants to do an intro, feel free to just chime in. At uh, any point. Uh, you know, I don't have nothing prepared, but I'll do an intro. Oh, okay. Well, let's, let's go with it. This is quite unexpected. We needed to get out of Asana Town, and quickly. Every moment we spent trapped under the Sunrise Collective was another moment that Pinnacle might see through the Trent Farstar facade. It's a good persona, don't get me wrong, but I don't believe for a second it's going to stand up to one of their intel teams. Having rescued Nib and Nindin, we learned the Collective was still relatively disorganized, and had set up their headquarters in the Horizon House. Nib informed us they seemed to have several key members of the local government held hostage as well. If we could infiltrate Horizon House, it might be possible to take out the leaders of this movement and restore transit between Asana Town and Donshore. Due to arousing suspicions the day before, we posed as maintenance staff and made our way to Horizon House. Blending in with the crowd, the tension in the city was palpable. We made our way inside, disabling the forces of the Sunrise Collective as we went, and we found ourselves face to face with Zaylan Trinipol, the leader of the Collective, whose face has been on every billboard since the lockdown. He wasn't happy to see us, to say the least, but before we could make a move, something exploded outside and gunfire rang out. Indeed. Uh, the very last nice. thing that happened at the end of the previous episode is he was about to offer that you guys leave and he would call off his troops, which probably would have been a lie. But uh, instead, what happened is obviously some explosions and gunfire that he wasn't quite expecting had started to, to ring out outside. Uh, not only he, but uh, the hostages are all looking around uh, panicked uh, at the sound of such heavy ordnance being utilized near the Horizon House. No, I don't think that's us. <laughs> Captain, I, I think we should take up. care of these hostages and move out of here as quickly as possible. Would you like me to go out and check what's going on? Uh, uh, y yes, yes, why don't you do that? I'll go with them. We'll just get these just fellows just rounded up and, um, go out the door we came in. Uh, Gur, you should help free these hostages. I can cover Ninden. Okay. Uh, the door to Meta yourself. reason, I can't do anything about uh, people who are um, who need some engineering to get them out of things. That's okay. <laughs> we have a key. <clears throat> it was included in that big list of things we got. Indeed. All right. right. No, I'm going to uh, take it all back. However, that door to the south is actually welded shut. <laughs> oh. Well, that's uh, frustrating. Dude. You um, can try to you can try to break it down if you want to. Break it down. Or we'll we'll take one vain strength attempt at it. Yeah, just same. Kind of notices it's locked and then kicks it with his booted foot and gets a twelve on uh, <laughs> gets a nine on the die. Probably just kicks it in vain. Okay, this is too embarrassing. Doors does uh, welded that are welded shut just isn't very effective. <gasps> I like Don't tell that, that you'll crush your dreams. 
I like to think that Ninden and uh, Garuk just like stopped and looked at the door and then looked at each other, nodded once, and they both like stepped forward and kicked it and were promptly rebuffed by the door. It would have no. been pretty heckin' great if it worked, though. I was gonna oh. say. That would, that's how um, it would have gone if it worked. And then, and then we look at each other again, and Ninden's like, Yeah, out the way we came. <laughs> yeah. Wait, I guess. Ho hold on, this seems silly. Uh, excuse me, uh, what was your name again? Talk, addressing he, the. He main looks bad at you guy. incredulously. Like, the, the, the fact that the people who have dethroned him don't even know who he is is extremely frustrating. It started with a T. Did it end up like this? <laughs> Zaylin? Uh, yeah, no, he, he, Why he, are you... oh. he growls through his teeth, Zaylin Trinipal. Oh, the last name starts with a T. Uh, yes, we'll need you to, um, put down your, your weapons, and, um, uh, we'll just hold, stop this whole thing. This whole, this whole area being on lockdown is not working for us. Psst, aren't you supposed to be a Lushenta, uh, version of yourself? With that <laughs> uh... No, he was uh, disguise. He was disguising himself as the Ifrit, actually. Oh, okay. Uh, but his disguise has been seen through at this yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. Harald's just Harald right now. <laughs> do, do you want to be seen as Harald? I mean, like, you aren't you on the run? Uh, this doesn't seem like the appropriate time to talk about it, Mouse. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that was all out of character because it wasn't in my Mouse voice. Because yeah. character voices are supposed to mean something and act yeah. as a shorthand for the audience. That's a fair yeah. count. <laughs> Whoa! The fourth wall! It fell down! <laughs> I was gonna say, oh, oh no! sorry, put that Wait, fourth wall back I, up! Oh no! Up. <laughs> uh, could we get that key from you? He, he just, uh... Frustrated, he puts the plasma rifle down and then uh, fishes into one of his pouches and uh, gets the keys for the bindings for the six hostages. I said four hostages last episode. There's actually six. So I, I added more two. that we didn't see before. <laughs> yes, they <laughs> materialize. Make a sense there, motive check. No. <laughs> there were there were two small children cowering in the corner that we didn't Oh know. no. <laughs> Please sir, can I have some government? Uh no. Uh <laughs> government <laughs> Uh so uh, I guess we're all like keys to the manacles. He's he does not look pleased, but he also doesn't look stupid. So he's not going to try to fight this group of people by himself. Sure. So uh, I guess I'll... Uh, Kaylin un... will pull out her eye on tape. <laughs> Time to... Paradise. We can just use these manacles that they're that, that, that the council is using. Are Use manacles and recycle. better than eye on tape? I don't know. Let me check. DC 20 or something plus the CR of the person applying them. Yeah, is it like a stealth... Uh, what is it? Sleight of hand to tie somebody up? Is that... What it is. Ooh, I, know that's ooh, what I have, used to be. I have a sleight of hand. I can do it. I can do it. I think exactly is that is that the tape. check to tie somebody up? Uh, no, I, I don't yeah. think so. Looking it up. Yeah, I, Ion Tape is just a flat twenty-eight. There's no none of this rolling dice. I mean, wow. flat twenty-eight is still pretty great. Just pretty awesome. you just tape them up. <laughs> yeah, just tape them up. Tape yeah, them up. why I have Ion Tape. All right. Will free uh, while that's going on, on, I imagine Gur and Ninden will have headed to the front door by this okay. point. Um, All right. Um, let me... So I'm just going to drag myself through. I can don't know if I... you can, but I will do it. Okay. Oh. Aha, yep. I'm over here now. All right. Um... You don't see anything uh, uh, like that I need to put on the map necessarily. We're all... We're going, like, full description here at this point. Um... The... The explosions actually stop, but gunfire continues, uh, and you see out front uh, the reason why. Do uh, you see that there are some detonated vans outside uh, in the front yard? Uh, however, you see some new vans, uh, some new armored vehicles uh, that bear a different logo. Uh, this one looks more like a uh, circle with a seven in the middle of it. Uh, surrounding uh, these vans are a variety of Shirin, uh, all wearing the same tactical gear, and they appear to be fighting the Sunrise Collective. Um, there is one Shirin that is not wearing a helmet that is standing by a van 
probably like 50 feet away from the front door of Horizon House, who looks over at you as you exit the, the door and then goes back to looking at the battlefield without addressing you. Uh, oh, she must be an important PC. They're standing NPC. beside. <laughs> they're standing beside a, a pair of uh, technicians who look like they're hunkered down uh, with some computers next to the vehicle she's standing next to. Um, excuse me. Oh, oh, wait, no, you? I'm not there. I was gonna say, are you no. there? <laughs> um, Ninden will look at Gur once again, uh, and then head over to that Sheeran, I suppose. Mm -hmm. um, Indeed, yes. Do either of you have culture? No. Did I become cultured in the... No. <laughs> no. We're the uncultured swines of the team. We didn't... We're not the faces. Oh, hi, Spec. How's it going? Um, yeah, so the... Uh, and then you're a... I forget, is your background mercenary? Yes. It is. Okay. Um, I would... I would say I that you probably don't need to make a check for this. Or does it say that it, it, does mercenary give you a bonus to recognizing other mercenary groups? It, it, it lowers does. the DC it, by it lowers five. The DC, but... Yeah, but you need, but you need a culture check, don't you? Yeah, I could Gross. make it untrained yeah, if it just 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 make it. Lower. It'd be fine. It'd be fine. The DC is pretty low for you, I would say. All right, uh, we'll see. <laughs> oh no! I do have that beautiful Whoa. negative one to intelligence base <laughs> checks from uh, being a Vesk. Indeed. Uh, uh, so, yeah, yeah, I don't know these guys. <laughs> as as Ninden stares that's... into space, Gerd just kind of waves his hand in front of him. Hey, buddy. Uh... <laughs> oh, sorry, I was trying to recognize them using my, my theme-given bonus. Um, <laughs> but I rolled a four. That's a three? <laughs> yeah. Gerd turns three, three to the invisible contest. camera and shrugs. <laughs> uh, yeah, so you don't quite... Uh, have an idea of, of what is, is going on here. But... I'll we'll check in via comms and say, uh, well, uh, what's out there? There seem to be uh, two two groups. One, the Sunrise Collective. One, a bunch of Sheeran. Uh, they are fighting. Uh, there's an emblem of... Uh, there's a seven with... Is that right, Seth? There's a... Yeah, here. I'll actually... Um, okay. You might recognize oh, cool. that this is not official book art. Hey, uh... Oh, neat. <gasps> oh, neat. So nice. this is, uh, yeah, this is, this is the captain or who, what you assume to be the captain of this particular operation, uh, who stands near the, uh, van mm -hmm. nearest to the front door. So yeah. culture check um, to see if as, I recognize that logo. As an aside, Seth, uh, this mm -hmm. definitely could be book art. I really like this. Eh, not quite, but. Um, yeah, the That's description is, is pretty vague, honestly. You know, you, you get enough clues, you know, Sheeran, uh, Seven in a circle. Uh, you And you have seen them around the archipelago before. This is a one of the famous, like, Versys-style uh, Sheeran mercenary groups called Stinger Seven. Um, Sheeran mercenary groups from Versys are highly sought after because they all have uh, telepathy and have the ability to be devastatingly effective on the battlefield. Um, and what kind of clients do they usually serve? Uh, you know, uh, it, it depends on the mercenary group. Paying but, ones. Yeah, paying ones, that, but they, they, they tend to operate within the law. Right. Uh, Herald will say, oh yes, that's the Stinger 7. Uh, I don't think there'll be a problem. Here, let's just get these council members out there and announce that the whole thing is over and that they freed them all, freed, freed themselves without any help. <laughs> um, That's you. going to be, I, Captain, Zaylin is going to tell them of us, I imagine. Uh, I don't think that we can keep him quiet. Uh, all right. Um, uh... Oh yes, that's it. Uh, uh, and I, his uh, uh, Harald's head will merge back together, and he'll grow his Trent Farstar stubble. <laughs> All right, Trent Farstar is just gonna get reputation for saving more people. And uh... Uh, uh, Kaylin, did you uh, did you tape up uh, Zaylin's mouth? Yeah, yeah, I taped his hands together and put one strip over his mouth and zapped that too, so it turned to hard plastic. 
<laughs> and then I sort of shove them in a corner uh, as he um, sees before coming over head. here to talk to these these council people. Uh, as he sees Harald's head uh, merge together, you notice that his eyes go wide. Like, what the actual prank am I looking at right now? Yeah. <laughs> what? You get Started used to it. Smile and nod. Wait. Walk away. Uh, wait. Wait. Better idea. <laughs> um, he'll change oh, no. into Zaylin. Oh. And grab his compad. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Uh. What's this guy's voice? I need a oh, few he has he has generic bad guy voice. Smug and cultured. Smug and cultured. Yes. I, I All right. He's, that he's, a no, he's he's he's, 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 a, he's a merc. He's like an he's like an ex military. Uh, uh, I was about to use a political term that probably wouldn't go over well. So yeah, he's, he reminds he's me smug of Drake and not culture. Like he surrendered the moment he wasn't. He's like, I'm really cool. Look at me, I'm a troll. <laughs> Oh, it's five on one? Never mind. <laughs> Here, take my stuff. <laughs> Sounds like a smart man to me. Yeah, no kidding. All right. Uh, wearing his face, I'll say, mm -hmm. uh, counts, Councilman, uh, what do you say if I go on the public broadcast and formally uh, renounce our control of the sector back to the council? Um, here. Uh, one of the Lushinto officials who is who seems to be uh, respected amongst the group that you've rescued, who introduces herself as the Hal Koros. Sorry, Inona Norivar. That's the one. Inona Norivar. Uh, she is a female Karasha Lushinto. Uh, she. She looks at you curiously and says that that might work i i don't know if that's the best way to handle it but it's certainly a way to handle it i know that they were using the room on the east side of the horizon house as their broadcasting room all right we'll use that do you have any idea why stinger seven would be here are they going to be an issue she shakes her head i have no idea why they're here um, Mouse, can I get a perception check, please? All right. That's a 12. That's fine. Uh, you notice that you have a connection to the infosphere again. Ooh, I can check my RSS feeds. <laughs> Mouse just like wordlessly starts like reading web comics <laughs> without telling anybody that the can finally catch up. up. <laughs> uh, um, do you really need a perception check to know when the infosphere is back up? Doesn't everybody get like a zillion notifications as soon as it happens? <laughs> yeah, I, that's fair. Uh, you'll, you'll notice that you start getting notifications from your various uh, social media, etc. Uh, it seems We've that the infosphere is gotta be social media. This is the future, man. All right, so um, I, I guess we will go to the communication room, and or, or maybe we can start out with an announcement on the porch. Although I guess people seem distracted over there. Yeah, a little bit. Gur, I mean, Gur and Ninden are still outside. Yeah. Uh, do you do you uh, are you just gonna stay on the on the 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 porch here, or did you want to approach the? I, I had said that we were going to approach, and then yes. all oh. of that other stuff happened. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, Let's okay. go back we to multiple things. We started walking, and yeah. then scene change. <clears throat> yes. Yeah. I, I when I, I initially envisioned everybody leaving at the same time, but that's okay. Uh, we'll we will adjust. So yeah, if you approach, uh, the uh, Sheeran captain without the helmet holds up a finger at you while looking at the uh, technicians a little like a moment longer. Doing like that that cool movie thing where like it, it's the the camera's on on her face, and she holds up her finger over her shoulder while you guys approach behind her. But then she turns around, and she says, so "I'm Pick cool. Turok, we're Stinger Seven. Hello, Pick. Uh, we are. Well, I'm Ninden, and this is Gur. Uh, we we have some good news for you. I think we've taken out Zaylin. Okay, so you did take care of it. We heard that somebody was going to make a move on the Horizon House, so we thought we'd do our part. How did you hear? 
you know a nib? Yes. Yeah, we got a tip from her through some pirate channels indicating that uh, somebody was going to make a move on Horizon House. And while we are based here, uh, we do like to leave occasionally. So we thought we would take the opportunity to, to strike. Mm. Well, you seem nib, to be man. making good work of the, uh, the dregs here. Uh, I hope you haven't she lost too many people. She looks over the, she looks over the the battlefield, and you can see that the Sunrise Collective is slowly retreating farther and farther towards this, the Lion Crawler Station. And then she looks at her data pad and says, mm, "Only a couple of wounds." Good. Um, well, let us know if you need any help. Uh, I believe we're just wrapping up inside. <laughs> she. If anybody's familiar with Ashiran, you notice that the uh, particular uh, twitch of her uh, antenna would den would uh, denote something like a smirk. And uh, she says, yeah, we're wrapping up here, too. Excellent. Well, pleasure to meet you. She just nods her head and uh, goes back to looking at the technicians. Hmm. Well, girl, I suppose... Uh... Unless there's anything else you want to do, we can go inside. No, that would, that, that would be fine. Let, let's go check in with the group. Yes. And I like shuffles his feet a little bit and heads back in. <laughs> shuffles his feet. He like kicks at the dirt. He's got his hands in his pockets. Boop. I'll move you guys huh. back in there. Uh, all the council members are appear to be free, and uh, Zaylin is not free. They did in it. They did a change, an exchange. A swaparoni. Yeah, uh, it's like uh, it's like physics, a except for, for every every action there are six uh, <laughs> equal opposite actions. Why don't you uh, drag us all together and move us into that telecommunications room? Yeah. Since that's where we're oh. going next. And sure. I don't actually know where it is. Yeah, well, you guys didn't go to it. You skipped a lot. Screw your content. Oh, Going wow, straight to the boss. Um, yeah, okay. Let me open my notes from the previous episode. <laughs> this looks like a nice little room. Yeah, actually, it is It is a really cool little room. Uh, let me... Is that like a live carpet of grass or something? Something like that. Hmm. Please bear with me as I find this room. That's right. We can talk amongst ourselves. Nope, nope. Yeah. I uh, hope the there's no audio hiccups going on on you all and out in Streamland. Yeah, let us know. The best chips. Mm -hmm. um, um, oh, yeah. Let's resume that. No, Garbage. that's not because I just found the thing I need to find. <laughs> <laughs> right. you, you enter the lounge. Uh, this room is decorated with comfortable armchairs, wooden desks, bookshelves, and a replica of a classic Lashinta ice fan blowing cool air. The floor in this room, curiously to anyone who is not used to spending time in the lounge of a university in Castrovel, I'm looking at you, Mouse, uh, is actually 100% moss. Soft green moss. So you're probably very familiar with this style of carpeting, uh, Mouse. Um, oh, yeah. It's soft, but then, uh, you know, if you sit too long on it, it leaves marks on your pants. And, um, you know, the staff, I think they charge extra because it's kind of hard to tend. But, ooh, it is squishy. On the western wall, there is a Sunrise Collective flag framing a currently empty desk and chair uh, in front of this camera. Uh, uh, in front of this is a camera connected to a data pad and a shotgun microphone pointed at desk. Uh, you recognize that the backdrop is the one that Zaylin Trinipol himself delivered his message to Asana Town from. And you suspect you might be able to utilize this equipment to make a similar broadcast, if so desired. So desired. Okay. Uh, I'll sit down where Zaylin was as Zaylin and have two council members stand behind me. Um... Mm -hmm. And turn on the broadcast. This is Zaylin. Having worked with the council members, I believe it will be possible to uh, enact many of the changes that 
the Sunrise Collective has been trying to achieve these many years by working with the government, not against it. Thus, I formally cede control of the dome back to its uh, rightful governors. Okay. Let's go ahead and make a bluff check. Oh, boy. This juncture, I'd like to... Uh, oh, never mind. Oh, man. <laughs> remind, oh, were you going to remind me that I said you guys could keep a re-roll from last week? Yes, I was. Okay, there you go. Uh, so, yes, uh, that is a 29 for the podcast, and uh, difficult for you to know how it turns out from where you're currently sitting, but it's out there now. All right. Um... I walks guess. up and uh, when the cameras go off and Pat puts a hand on her old children says that was that was well done. Good job. Oh, thank you. Uh, 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 thank you. Thank you. Th uh, it's getting very confusing in here. <laughs> uh, the council Gurgis, members are, uh, are very Gurgis thankful said, for their. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, Gur just kind of says, uh, d "Don't mention it, uh, Captain," and then like, like kind of shuffles off again. Oh my! <gasps> Some development. Sorry, needed to get that little bit of character development. No, I understand. I, understand. I apologize. Uh, I was just going to say something boring, like the, the the council members are very thankful that you saved them. So you know, no big deal. I mean, of course they are, right? They should be. They ought to be. Yeah, the ungrateful <laughs> son of a gun. <laughs> no, they're extremely grateful. <laughs> uh, of course, uh, yes, of course. Very grateful. There was, one of, there was one of them who's actually kind of supportive of the Sunrise Collective, and he seems a little frustrated that. Uh, that this that things are going the way that they're going, but uh, he is. Dude, they put you in handcuffs. <laughs> uh, he is he is silent in his current company because he knows that speaking recklessly about that kind of thing will probably get him in trouble. So, uh, but if there's any way that you can uh, downplay our activity here. That would be mm -hmm. great if you could just um, say that the that that Stinger Nine uh, uh, Seven Sevens attack, combined with some ongoing negotiations with the Sunrise Collection, were just how this whole thing got resolved, and just not mention us at all. That would be that would be peachy. <laughs> they they seem a little bit confused by this. Um, Put that and... on a T-shirt. <laughs> what? They seem yeah. confused by this? They seem a little confused by, in parentheses, Something you all not wanting any glory. Um, just real quick, actually, uh, while I still have these notes open. So among the stuff that I uh, mentioned that was here in this room, uh, there is a data pad. Ooh. In case somebody is interested in taking a look at it. I sure am. Okay. Uh, it's not secure. Uh, I think they assumed that nobody was going to make it this far, so they didn't even bother to lock this thing up. Losers. Uh, there's a lot of uninteresting info on here. Uh, a lot of it, like, just kind of like personal stuff or communications uh, to people on the battlefield that are no longer useful to you. Uh, however, you do notice uh, something in their financial ledger that might catch your attention. Oh, for... money. Do you have do you have a uh, culture by chance? No. Okay. Um Okay. Do you what you do see is you see the amount that Sunrise Collective paid the brass dragons and it it seems like a bargain to you, but you're not sure. Uh, it's, uh, you, hey. you would expect that paying a, a mercenary group like that is usually a lot more than than what was paid. Hey, uh, Harald, Kalen, you people who might know something about hiring mercenaries. Oh, oh, or Ninden, Ninden, you might know this. Uh, how much would you say it would cost to hire a group like the Brass Dragon? Just, you know, gut check. Hmm. Uh, Ninden would like to make an untrained culture check. You can also make a profession just get, just mercenary check if you have that. I gotta put ranks into that, but uh, I don't <laughs> oh. have ranks right now. That's fine. You can make a culture check, and anybody else. Oh, who has culture it is well. a two this time. Oh no! 
no. Karam's got a ten. Would Caitlin got... like to take a take a shot at it? I really gotta hit the uh, books. Yes. <laughs> Did the jump thing and opened roll twenty in my what? regular? There it goes. Uh oh. Nope, that's not mine. <laughs> I'm gonna say somewhere between one thousand and a hundred thousand. Oh, there it is. It's yeah. a point. Oh, hey, wow, you nailed it. Yeah, Kaylin, that is way too little to hire a mercenary force at the strength that the Brass Dragons has offered. Way too little. Huh. I look at uh, the bound form of the former uh, conqueror. Mm -hmm. As he's sitting at the floor, and kind of, kind of toe him with my shoe, like, "Hey, did you guys <laughs> get like a? How'd you get such a good deal on the on the brass dragons?" He he glares at you because his mouth is currently <laughs> sealed shut. Uh, I oh. use. Oh I wait, use, he uh... has limited telepathy. Duh. Yeah. Uh, uh, he. Uh, what he'll do instead is. Or, or did you tape his antenna down too? No. <laughs> Uh, I don't think that would do anything. Uh, he he, sa uh, he says, look, I don't know why they offered me such a good deal, but I took it. Perhaps there were ulterior motives. Did you reach out to them? Sense motive. Somebody with sense motive. I say to him with his face and voice. Creepy. <laughs> Is anybody uh, doing I guess a, is somebody actually doing a sense yeah, motive? I guess I'll do a sense motive, yeah. Yeah, he's telling the truth. But does he answer my he, question? Um, he he like thinks about it for a moment, and he says, "We we put the feelers out for a mercenary group, and they responded pretty quickly, and the deal was good, and their equipment was good, so we took it." <laughs> Ninden chuckles to himself off on the side. Feelers, because because elbows Kerr, because he's a he's a Lushunta. Oh, uh, <laughs> spacism. Spacists. It was more a play on words. Yeah, no, it's a and kind of... and was your contact the um, uh, Ifrit with the Doshko? No, it was a uh... oh shoot, oh no. Bear with yeah, me you moment. need to pay, turn like 50 pages. We can talk about sunships. <laughs> Go ahead and discuss sunships. Now they're sun inferior chips. to Doritos. Mm. Oh my lord. I think we can all agree that they're kind of gross because of the like powder that gets on your fingers. The powder is a problem. I know somebody who eats uh, chips and that kind of thing with uh, chopsticks. Oh yeah, no, that's the because... way I do it too. So you yeah. do, then you can like eat chips oh, and man. also Guys, type this, on your keyboard. This problem is solved by napkins. Yeah, but it's then you have to wipe your hands in between no, each chip. Solution. You still can't get it all off your fingers with a napkin. Though. Yeah, there's residue. There's residue, Nick. And then you put take your yeah. finger and you put and it your in your mouth. Smell like oh the yeah, and then, and then no, you, that's gross. That's even Got worse. Your that is way worse. That is way worse. In in the saliva. No. Yeah, nope. and then you're getting, and then you, and since you touched your keyboard and put it in your mouth, your keyboard's like the dirtiest part of why your home. Why are you doing your keyboard while you're eating chips? That's exactly why we do the chopsticks, because like I'm like typing things and thinking and eating, and I can do this stuff simultaneously. With chopsticks, oh, you man. can do this I, stuff. Yeah, I can't I'm gonna keyboard have to try and eat at the same time, like at all. That's my, I don't know that's my point. With the magic of chopsticks, you can. <laughs> With the magic of On chopsticks. top of that, you shouldn't have chips anywhere near your keyboard because you will get chip crumbs in your keyboard regardless of whether you eat it with chopsticks or Just not. Just eat it over My the bag. My contact with the brass dragons was made to use Oh, thank God, he's back. <laughs> I'm sorry to slip that in. That was, that was very subtle. Nice. Well done. Well done. Thank Good you. transition. Uh, who, was, who was your contact again? I, I typed it in the chat. It was Meiji Jalusan. Jalusan. You know what? I don't think we ever got her actual name because we just no. killed her. That was not her. That was a different person. Oh. Oh, good. Have I ever heard of I this name? I would have hated to have killed the right person. The wrong no, person. You, 
you know. You, you, you have not heard the name Meiji Jellison before. Hmm. Can I do a computer's check to try and look her up? Now that we have internet? Sure. This, is this really isn't our problem, though. Captain, you keep saying that, but we keep helping people. And uh, frankly, 15. I like the second part. You see some vague references to, to her, some like job listings and stuff, but nothing specific. Hmm. You know that she is somebody who exists and is probably here somewhere on the archipelago. Hmm. Well, we'll turn the information over to the proper authorities. Such as... The council members standing in the room with us right now? Yeah. One of them, one of them waves. Okay, cool. Hello. Hi. And I guess we'll just kind of sidle out of here. Uh, <laughs> so it's, 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 yeah. Okay. Through the side entrance. Through the side entrance? Yeah. Oh, the window through the garden? <laughs> So, like, you just leave Zaylin tied up, and you're just like, well, bye. <laughs> you just kind of walk <laughs> outside. I feel well, like I... that's very on brand for us. <laughs> I am curious what's in this room. Hey, can we go out through the front door or that atrium? Just because we didn't go, you know, and I, I don't expect to be back here. You know, I, I, I like to take photos when I go to touristy spots. Uh, Harald looks nervous and says, well, I, I, I suppose. Ooh, this room is also dark on my map. <laughs> uh, I think that might just the... be... <clears throat> I think that might just be because you uh, didn't mark them. I believe those are a hallway and a bathroom. Uh, the orange room that you and uh, Minden walked through to get out front is actually a cafeteria. Hmm. I guess I'll ask Ninden him. holds out a Ninden holds out a bagel that he grabbed on the way as proof. <laughs> My gosh! This All right, what are we doing, here? guys? Come on! <laughs> uh, I, I guess I'll I ask the council. Run here. Yeah, yeah, I got. Okay, it. fine. Ask the council if they need anything else from us, or if they think that they'll just be able to bring down the whole, the whole, uh, quarantine on the dome from here. Now that we've taken them out and. Uh, 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 Stinger 7 has seems to have gutted their army. You guys are so weird. Uh, yeah, so Enona, uh, Enona is uh, first to, to speak up again, and she says, forget if we need anything, do you need anything? We'd be happy to help you. Uh, I, I mean, arranging some sort of award payment might take some time, but uh, at the very least I can I can set you up in a hotel or something if, if you need a place ooh, to stay. Ooh, or... Hotel! Hotel! I don't want to have to sleep on the couch again. It's messing up my neck. It would be much mm. it would be much appreciated, yes. Um... Uh, Alright, I, I guess we could use some credits, but uh, mm. please, uh, uh, you know, no need to, to have any sort of award ceremony or anything. This is, this is uh, we're, we're happy for uh, the public story to be that there were some negotiations and that Sigur 7 did the things. Uh, I don't understand. Why wouldn't you want... You're, you saved Asana Town from, from this regime. Yeah. Nah, you know, it's just... Uh... No, I have no, I have no idea how to say this politely. We just don't want people to know it was us. Seems really confused, it's, but because it's it's me. simple. They were scum. They needed to die. We don't need recognition for this. We were just doing our part. Yeah, uh, I'll call it charity. She she's kind of starting to get the picture, and she was like, "Okay, I see. Uh, yeah, I, I can, I can, I can just, uh, I can just say that a band of of." unknown heroes took care of the issue, I suppose. And she looks at the other Perfect. council members. Uh, maybe a couple of them don't look like they're on board with the idea, but they haven't exactly found out what your names are yet either, so there's not a lot yeah, they I was, can do. I was just going to say that. We haven't given mm -hmm. them our names yet. Yeah. And uh, look, why don't you... Uh, we'll just get your contact info, and if there's something we end up needing, and you folks are dying to pay us back somehow, we'll, we'll let you know. 
And she nods her head and says, that sounds like a fine arrangement. In the meantime, and the everyone's rest. happy. She'll provide her contact info uh, to your comm unit so you can reach her. Inona Norivar. So important nice. she doesn't have art in the book. Got it. Uh, A lot yes, of that going the most around. important. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, hmm. If there's nothing else going on here, we, we're going to go ahead and head on to where we're staying because I imagine it's getting late and we're getting tired. Yep. <laughs> and we'll need to, like, we want to verify that the, the council was able to retake control of the town and we'll want to do that from a distance. Uh, actually, over the, the over the info sphere, uh, anybody who's tracking any live news updates can see that the line crawler stations reopened uh, to to clear light the dome that you're currently on, and uh, requ uh, the council has requested reinforcements from Donshore, and they are starting to come uh, to assist uh, Stinger Seven in taking back uh, both this and the Asana Town dome. Okay, then we should just uh, go back and check with Teres, uh, thank her for her help, and from there we will plan to go to the line thing station. Line okay. thing? Line crawler. Crawler, line crawler! crawler, they crawl the lines. You used to live here, Harald. <laughs> yeah, this is Simon. This is Simon's problem, not Harald's. <laughs> Simon never gets to complain about players not remembering names of things, like, ever again. I can and will. I expect them to write See things down. Before. All right. So have you guys uh, leave Horizon House then, or yep. Indeed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. While okay. while we're on the line crawler, uh, Ninden would sidle up next to Harald. Um. Oh yes, and as okay. I I suppose as I leave, uh, as we leave the sector, if we're skipping that far, I will go back to Trent Farstar. That sounds that sounds good. We need. Needed to take a line crawler out to get to uh, Terrace. Oh, you're right. You're right. You're right. Well, not... actually, what I was going to say is uh, uh, before you get to the line crawler, uh, do, do you exit out the front? Do you exit out the side? What? what side, how are side. you exiting? As sneaky as possible. Side I believe the garden was mentioned. Okay. Uh, as you exit out the side, uh, luck would have it that there's actually a uh, a reporter <laughs> and a a camera crew outside. It looks like they're making their way to the front, but they see somebody exit the side, and all of their cameras. Focus uh -huh. <laughs> oh. Bronk. All right. All Mouse right. puts up her hood. <laughs> Ooh, Gur has something for this. Gur draws a smoke grenade and throws it on the ground. <laughs> oh, perfect. <laughs> smoke <off. laughs> Wait, like does, does Gur not Get want her. to get spotted either? No, he doesn't remember. <laughs> no, he's wanted by one of the drowns. Yeah. Haven't you read his backstory? But she called, but either way, this reporter calls out. She she goes, uh, Excuse me, are you the heroes? Are you the ones that, that, that <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> cleared out yet. Horizon House? Uh, uh, the smoke bomb, right away. Yeah, better yet. Hold on. How close are they? Are they within 35 feet? <laughs> Christ, all right, all right, all right. Uh, if it looks like we Gert won't be able to escape them, them. <laughs> Gert throws the... a smoke grenade amongst them. Read the room, Gert. Like, Excuse me, are the are you the what the prank? <laughs> and then suddenly smoke <laughs> around underneath. Yep. All. You can yep. stay and oh, do good. the Trent Farstar thing if you want to promote Trent Farstar, but we will scuttle away. I don't want now to. We're I don't... throwing smoke grenades at innocent civilians. Uh, it's so damaging. Okay. <laughs> Still, that's an aggressive okay, yeah. action. Fair. No, you've got a very good point. Gert thinks about throwing it at them, decides against it, and throws it between them just to... There is them. no law saying you can't throw smoke grenades at reporters. Just saying. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> there isn't a law saying it's okay, either. <laughs> okay, okay, look, look. Uh, fine. Uh, as, as we, like, creep out the door, I'll, like, uh, I'll, like, spot the reporter and do a quick Trent Farstar swap. And say, well, this uh, definitely isn't how I wanted to do this, but I don't really see any great alternatives. Uh, Kaylin, try to stay in the back. And Trent Farst. Okay. So are you are you doing the grenade thing? What's going on? No, we're not doing the grenade thing. I think Gar changed his mind. Uh, oh no! If so, unless somebody's gonna stop me, he's gonna do it. 
Yeah, you said you... I think he's doing it. <sighs> okay. You do the grenade thing. <laughs> if it looks like the grenade thing is not going to work, then Trent Farstar can emerge from the smoke. <laughs> <laughs> you can't tell because the... Caitlin's going around the back of the building. The cloud of, the, the cloud of smoke that raises Away. from the grenade between you and the camera crew obscures both of you sufficiently. Perfect. Then no Trent Farstar is needed, and we book it. You guys are going to be the death of me. All right. Uh... What? Us? No. <sighs> okay. All right. So you go back to the lion crawler to go back to Teresa's apartment, is that correct? Yes. Yeah, just to check on her. And then also, you know, to pursue the reason we were here in the first place. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, they're both there. And uh, Nib seems uh, super excited, um, actually. And I guess if we're, if we're going there... Uh, yeah, Nib seems really excited. She's like, so, did did Stinger 7 actually show up? They did. Wow, yeah, I thought that guy was twerp. a liar. That, well, that, uh, that, that pirate channel I was on, there was some military geeks there, and they said that they knew that there was a secret Stinger 7 cell somewhere in clear light. I didn't believe them, but I guess it's true. Uh, who are they exactly? Oh, they're a Sheeran mercenary group. Yeah, we gathered that, but like, are they a big deal? I mean, not any more so than a than a, any other Sharon mercenary group. It's just they're very effective on the battlefield and definitely a lot better trained than the, the Sunrise Collective seemed to be, so. Yeah, that was pretty awesome. Um, so she looks at the rest of you and she's like, you guys can really handle yourselves in a tough situation, huh? Yeah, that's, uh, that's us. We're really hoping not to get in any more tough situations, though. <laughs> she grins a little bit, and she's like, Yeah, that makes sense. Um, well, if you're looking for a place to stay, I can I can start talking with the DCI to see if we can get you set up. Maybe get you some employment, you know, get the credits flowing. Uh, if that's something believe, you're after. I uh, believe the council offered us a hotel to stay at while we were getting back on our feet. A quick huddle, well, quick huddle, 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 huddle. All right, we have a crew huddle. Uh, <laughs> Caitlin, uh... Teres and Nib uh, awkwardly stand not super close to each other on the other side of the room as the, as the team. We whisper furiously. <laughs> glares at them every once in a while. <laughs> in order, uh, uh, I, I, guess, I guess since we're in secret, I'll use my normal natural voice that feels better. Uh, we prob If we want to figure out what um, Pinnacle was uh, uh, what happened with Pinnacle we should probably lay low but it'll take some time we probably can't go back to our apartments wait you guys have apartments here well yes we're from here well first I've heard of it apartment oh. is, our apartment is one word for it um anyway we should we should we should take Nib up on this offer and then with telepathic message. That way there's two places we could be staying and we should stay at neither of them. Okay, but then where do we actually stay? We get sleep pods somewhere. They're cheap. Also stop talking about things out loud. But how how but how will the crew know? If we, if I just, the telepathic thing is only one way, right? That's a good question. I think you get a reply of less than you five do get, words. You do get a reply. Um, but we can check that. Later. How yeah. will the crew know? That's five. <laughs> <sighs> it's true. Um, Captain, I, do I don't know about the rest of the mean? crew. Uh, oh, and it's just rounds. You can send ten words each round. Ah. That's what it is. Probably not worth worrying about. Yeah, it's not worth worrying about if we're having a... Yeah, this, up to one creature per level. So that means I can telepathically talk to three of you at a time at this point. Yep. 
Good to know. What was that, Ninden? I'm... I don't know about the rest of the crew. I had planned on being here for a bit anyway, uh, visiting with my brother. Um, but if we are going to be here, and there seems to be some imminent threat to the entire sun, and he's getting a bit agitated at this point, don't you think that we should look into it? No, which threat was that exactly? From the the burning... Oh yes, from, the, from Tasha's logs. Yes, the ship, and the, the talk of threatening to take over the Burning Mother, and now this, this nonsense with the burning the, the Brass Dragons signing up for the Asana Town job for so few credits. I The pieces are falling together, Captain. I don't know what it means, but it sounds like we have a legitimate threat. Harald looks shiftily back between Ninden and Kaelin. Well, yes, but we've already given all of that to the appropriate authorities. This doesn't need to be our problem. I've seen you, Captain. You you can't help yourself but help people. You're telling me that you are going to walk away from this. I, uh... Just telepathic, just Harald. He's not wrong. Uh, Harald glares Lala. at Kaelin. <laughs> I... <laughs> Regardless of my um, uh, personal inclinations, it seems unwise. This seems ha look. Um, if you're 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 inter you're here to to hang out with your brother, well, why don't you do that instead of um, worrying about all of these these problems? I am similar to you in that I cannot help myself but protect people who are less capable um i do plan on hanging out with my how ooh, uh, hanging out with my brother but um, i that won't be forever just as a just as a an aside uh, the most recent message you received from tendon uh, indicates that he's busy right now preparing for a festival for seren ray uh, but should be freeing <laughs> up moment, soon probably within In about a week days, would you so say? Like, no <laughs> no, <Yeah>. no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, you know, festivals for Sarah and Ray, like you do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Here on the yeah. sun, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they're, totally. They're kind of a um, big deal. They're, they're yeah, what a... Kind of a big deal. <laughs> yeah. Burning uh, the, the cathedral and all that. Mm -hmm. um, Radiant Cathedral. There it is. Burning Archipelago, Radiant Cathedral. Lots yeah, of fire. Uh, <laughs> Radiant Cathedral in the uh, Verb Gink Barcabelago. Oh boy. Such good uh, pronunciation. Somebody help him. Um, <laughs> help. Well, <laughs> does anybody else taste almonds? Grim. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. What was that, Kaylin? Um, if anyone's going to have more information on this, it's going to be DCI. Yes, and we've already point. we've already told them about it. Uh, look, um, Ninden, we're we're why don't we just have some shore leave? We can uh, each pursue our own little projects. If you're interested in looking in on this, that's that that's all right with with me. And uh, if if you get in trouble, let us know. Hmm. Ninden does not look satisfied. I sure would like to look into it. I mean, what else am I doing right now? Hmm. Uh, all right, but let's um, yes, let's take Nib up on her offer, uh, and or or well, Nib up or DCI or the council. Nib is the one who would be Nib trying to get you a job uh, yeah. at the DCI. We don't need a job, but. Well, we do kind of need credits. I haven't gotten my paycheck from Pinnacle. I don't know if you have. <laughs> yeah, I was going <laughs> to say, uh, it, it's it's around then you realize that you're actually not doing super hot in the credit. That's that's a good point. We could actually use a job. Do dropping oh. TRS off was sort of our last job, and being heroes doesn't pay well. We, uh, we, we do have all this gear. I say good gestures to we should, all of them. We should gear. sell some of it. Uh, and I would. Uh, 
I do need to make a stop at Dawnshore. Guys. It's it's probably not it's probably not gonna be very easy to offload a bunch of weapons in Asana Town currently. Dawnshore is probably your best bet to find a shop that will. <laughs> yeah. All right, buy let's. Weapons. So let's um. If we work for DCI, that's find seems... a recycler. Uh, throw all this stuff in it. Um, make any minor purchases we need. Check out DCI, see if they have any jobs for us, and um, and then uh, take take some some shore some shore leave, some shore leave. Some shore leave. Someone I need to see. Yes, uh, yes, I'm sure we all have people we want to see. All right, Harald will whirl around from the huddle and address Nib and Terrace. Uh, yes, I believe we will take whatever job you can get us with. Uh, what was it? CIS. DCI. That was it. Telepathically. DCI. <laughs> uh, she, she, uh, her as face long as, lights up. But, her, you know, her. maybe don't tell them uh, what we are in as much as you can. Uh, she, uh, she, her little cute mousy face lights up with a smile. And uh, she twiddles her ha fingers together and she says, yeah, it sounds great. I'll let them know. And hey, don't worry about it. Not only, not only are we pretty secretive, I mean... We tend we tend to get ridiculed just for being members of the Deep Cultures Institute, but um, we have a museum and stuff, and all of our our whole facility is monitored by a security system. So it's one of the safer places you could probably stay, honestly. If that's something you're worried about, it is. All right. <laughs> she seems to indicate that she's caught on that you guys are maybe not a hundred percent on the up and up. It's like zero percent up. <laughs> we're, we're we're so up. People. <laughs> What's anything about good? I said we're all good people. Oh, oh. Lawful oh. people, not good people. <laughs> well, we also have some some equipment that we'd like to offload. Um, if there's a recycler here, we could use that, or or we could bring it back to Donshore and to the market. Oh sure, it's gonna take me a little bit anyway to get you guys instated, so uh, I'll I'll let you guys know uh, what they say. I I can't imagine that they'll turn you down though. Okay. So uh, yeah, you go, you, you you go do your thing, and thanks for rescuing me, and I'll I'll be in touch. Our pleasure. For certain definitions of pleasure. Oh, shush. And we'll <laughs> um, head oh, shush. to the line crawler to Donshore. Yes. Okay. Um. Oops. Uh, so yeah, the uh, path through uh, Asana Town, it's, it's, it's changed, you know? Uh, you see a lot of Sunrise Collective uh, being uh, marched to various locations by authorities from other domes that have come to send how, back up. How do you um, like it? <laughs> uh, there's, you know, uh, there, there were casualties, so there's, there's some grisly scenes of... of uh, people being either carted off to hospitals or uh, bodies being accounted for. Uh, but it looks like uh, more people are leaving their homes to, to witness uh, the aftermath of this occupation. Um, and for all like really hopes to hear like some conversations where some previous racists were like, man, you're right. That announcement really changed things around. Let's not be racist anymore. <laughs> I don't think it works that way, hun. Yeah. The world can dream. Um, what's that? What's that? A uh, uh, flight of the Concord song? Um, I, I don't know. I don't know it. it. It's like a Puff the Magic Dragon uh, parody, but it's like uh, talking about I'll be the racist dragon. Yes, I'll be the racist <laughs> dragon. And at the end, he goes, "I'll be the racist." Well, not anymore. Dragon. <laughs> <laughs> I do love Flight of the Concords. They're pretty awesome. Anyway, uh, yeah, yeah you, you know, you're back on the line crawler. Um, they're they're crowded this time. People are very happy that they can go back home to Donshore or whatever other domes uh, they they live in. Uh, so yeah, uh, everything's everything's hunky dory. You make it to Donshore just fine. What is the? And, and no one recognizes us thanks to that clever smoke bomb. Uh huh. Sure. Sure. Yeah, that's exactly why. Mm -hmm. I guess our next step is. I mean, is... Mouse is keeping a close eye on the news feeds to see if anything got, you know, uploaded. Um, why don't you give me a uh, computer's check? 
No. All right. Yeah, just set up um, set up an alert, you know, on your favorite uh, Starfinder search engine. That's Google. a twenty-five. Mm -hmm. um, it does appear that the cameras that the crew was uh, were utilizing were live broadcasting, so there is a glimpse of your group before the the smoke bomb instantiated. Damn. Well, all right. That just lends us an air of mystique. <laughs> I'm I'm sure it's really grainy and horrible though because it's all like jerky footage and that was really quick, right? Sure. Yeah. Awesome. So people no. are like gossiping about those mysterious five blurry. No, individuals. these are like these are like these are like future cameras, man. They 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 they, they, they you figure they could probably fish through the frames and find a couple decent ones if somebody was really interested in it. Um, Mouse subscribes to all of the conspiracy boards that mm. are beginning to pop up around it and uh, makes an automated thing that will subscribe to any related one. Okay. I mean, yeah, people, the, there, there are some people who are talking about the group uh, from Horizon House, but nobody seems to know who they are, so... Excellent. Excellent. Oh, and Mouse, uh, oh, wait, no, Mouse doesn't have any bluff. Uh, Mouse spends the trip um, talking with Herald about, uh, hey, what kind of misinformation do you want me to start seeding on these? Help me think of a couple of good lies. Um... You know, because you're a liar. Hmm. Can Herald we just get rid of it? This activity. Can you just delete it from the internet? <laughs> um, you know, I don't think we have a long enough train ride to explain why that will not. All right, um, maybe, uh, just assign credit to someone else. People like credit, say that they're, uh, just a bunch of random Stinger 7 people, or are they all Sheeran? Yeah, I yeah, think they're, so, they're all, they're all Sheeran. <laughs> It's not a race thing. It's it's a it's an effectiveness thing. <laughs> Which I was just hoping that uh, that Simon could like roll a bluff check to you know generate some misinformation, a, a sure. score for the misinformation that I put up. Sure. Sure. Uh, Harald will, after a lot of nudging and pressure, make a bluff roll. Hmm. It's a twenty-eight. Cool. Cool. Okay. All right. I will continue to. I, I'll utilize that in some function. I'm sure. Definitely, um, definitely. What do you guys want to do on Don Shore? Offload all of the stuff that you have obtained over the various uh, combats and such. Yes. Obviously. Sell all okay. the loot and yeah. then maybe like start putting out some feelers to uh, uh, Kalen and Harald's contacts like at least our trusted ones at pinnacle mm -hmm. sure try to figure out what's um, happening over there i assume that uh at some point you'll want to take a rest yes yes after we spend a busy day out at, at the market uh we will mm -hmm. i guess what head back to nib's place serendipity uh pops up Bring mascolini it's time for your scheduled resting period Ugh. Really? Yes, really. Y I was in- uh, this protocol was installed after you stayed up for a consecutive 37 hours. If you recall. Ugh. Fine, Mom. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so yeah, I, I, I guess it just kind of depends. Like, is the group still traveling together? Or are you guys, like, literally splitting up in every direction? <laughs> Um, Ninden, I mean, Ninden would just pretty much hang out with Gur, although he would at one point want to search for, I guess, like a library chip on physical science because he wants to start, uh, you know, that's, he's, he's curious about how the sun works and sure stuff like that. Sure. Ooh, uh, Mouse might be looking for somewhere to get that, um, prosthetic arm installed. Um, <laughs> that probably isn't really looking now, the prosthetic arm is not an extra arm. 
mechanically. Yeah, you it can't. is to replace an arm. Yeah. I mean, it's, 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 it's not a special more. arm. It's just kind of a prosthetic arm. Fine, we did have she one of those it. in the last game. <laughs> yeah, we did find one of those in Signal of Screams. Like, uh, an extra yeah. arm. Yeah. Fine, she sells the prosthetic arm. Uh, I guess Harald and Kaelin... You, well, oh, sorry, go for it. I was gonna say, you swear as you as you hand it to the merchant, it waves at you as he takes it into the back. I flip it <laughs> off. <laughs> <laughs> prosthetic You're arm, more like more like pathetic arm, or or possessedic arm, because it. Anyway, what did what, what and Kaylin do? I'm sorry. We're going to get anonymous sleep pods that no one can find us, except we will leave like contact information with the rest of the crew in case the worst happens. Sure. Okay. Sleepover with Mouse and Gurr. And yeah, Linda. I mean, Mouse is going to take them up on that, on that hotel and totally oh, yeah. order room service. Oh, sure. The, uh, the and, and, hotel yeah. that the, um, the council got for us? Heck yeah. yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's one of those situations where um, uh, and under a typical situ uh, under typical circumstances, uh, like you would expect like an award for doing what you did. Uh, this is kind of like the the uh, equivalent of uh, this is the equivalent of offering somebody pizza for helping you move. <laughs> like it's just, it's just like oh thank you for saving us from that hostage situation you can i'll give you a hotel room and you can order a room service <laughs> like, like that's Ooh. supposed to be like an acceptable <laughs> reward for saving lives mm -hmm. but, yeah. to be fair well it we turned down we anything for. bigger i mean sure sure uh sorry nick you were gonna say something though if they're the rest of uh, the crew, if Mouse goes to that hotel room, is Harald... Uh, Kaylin might not necessarily think, oh, crud, she's putting herself in danger, but Harald probably would. Mm -hmm. um, Possibly. Yeah. I don't think so. I think Harald trusts his crew to make the best choices for themselves. Mm -hmm. Harald's more of a reactionary helper. Fair enough. Fair enough. Either way, uh, everybody does their uh, their post combat winding down uh, routines. Uh, sells off all of the stuff and finds a place to settle down for the night. Um, Kaylin, uh, in the efforts of raising money and that sort of thing, uh, you happen to be browsing through the. Uh, info sphere, and you see something pop up that seems kind of interesting. On Ooh, Space Craigslist? No. Um, actually, what you Ooh. see is an <gasps> oh, advertisement. Yes. Uh, so you see that a local race team, Algorithmic Compositions, who you are aware of, is a, is a team that likes to produce top-of-the-line uh, race equipment they're they're fairly prestigious uh but they have a they have a, a competition going on because the eraser that's supposed to take place in the uh, that's supposed to race for the blazing ring 37 that's uh coming up pretty soon uh is no longer available so they are holding a competition at the holodrome in uh chroma to find a replacement racer. And the event is happening tomorrow. Bookmarks this page. Do you mention it to That's others? That's exciting. <laughs> I mean, what's the prize? Oh yeah. Uh, if you if you do win uh, the race, uh, you know that you would get a substantial chunk of credits. That would definitely be helpful uh, if you're planning on uh, infiltrating Pinnacle, because right now you don't have the equipment or the capital that you need to to do something like that. Right. Well, and 
infiltrating pinnacles sounds like a horrible idea um <laughs> like regardless of what we end up doing it's gonna cost a lot of credits but we need we need credits yeah yeah to figure like whatever our next move move is we do need credits and this looks like an easy way to make some i thought that kaylin you know it's, i think she likes to race i could be wrong uh, I, that was an impression that i had i mean you know some people play um what's what's the name of that thing the buzz blink play guys Oh, murder ball! Murder ball. It's not actually called murder ball. There's a name for this sport. Oh, okay. Um, you guys just kept calling it murder ball. I thought ball. that's what it was. <laughs> no, no, I don't think it is. <laughs> uh, we 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 switched back and forth between calling it blitz ball and murder ball. No one ever oh, actually yeah. learned the name. Neither of them are correct. Some people played that in college. Uh -huh. Kaylin, you know, she raced like small ships. Well, when you have a rich parent, that's kind of how it goes. Because, you know, that's what rich kids do. Yeah, rich kids race expensive vehicles, sure. <laughs> You're rich in space. Is there anything anyone else would like to do before the next day comes? Uh, yeah, Gur, sorry, Ninden, in fact, would go over to Mouse's room. I don't know, are we in adjoining rooms or something? The, you can get separate rooms. Like, they'll, they'll arrange to do whatever you like. So you can have adjoining rooms, sure. Sweet. Um, or or even a sweet. Uh, oh, really sweet. Sweet. That's sweet. Too, too sweet. Um, Gert um, Ger has been like clinging to Ninden the entire time. He's he's a uh, country orc in a big city. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I don't know that this is a familiar territory for Ninden either, honestly. Not really. Um,. But, you know, Ninden is happy to uh, guide along Gur as best as he can. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, um, here, we, could take, we could take them sightseeing and gather information that way. Oh, that's cute. That's a plan for sightseeing. tomorrow. Sightseeing! Um, but anyhow, Ninden and, comes to Mouse's place uh, that evening, yes. right? Yes. Uh, he, um, Mouse answers the door. She's already wearing, like, fuzzy slippers, which also have Mouse on them, like mice oh. on them, <laughs> and uh, little PJs, um, you know, with, uh, you know, some sort of cutesy little things on them. Um, what are those cuttlefish fish creatures again? Uh, Stella Farah. Well, yeah, with Stella Farah on them. Like, you mean my favorite, new, my new favorite race in Star Trek? Yeah, Fighter. pretty much. I think everybody <laughs> likes the Stella Farah. Yeah. Because they're super adorable. <laughs> Anyhow, yeah, she are. answers the door. Um, there is half of an enormous pizza that's already been consumed sitting open <laughs> on the bed. And, oh, yeah, what do you want? <laughs> oh, Ninden's eyes dart from mouse o to over her shoulder at the pizza on the bed. Uh, good. Hello, hello, mouse. Um, I, uh, I was looking over this data pad, and he holds up a data pad. Um, I just recently, well, I spent a lot of money, actually, on a library chip on um, you know the sun and the stars and how the universe works and everything like that. Mm -hmm. um, it was it it was seeming a bit much, but I just I found myself very curious. Uh, I I want to know more about how these things work, uh, and I figured you 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 are very smart. Um, I am very I, smart. I, yes. Uh, do do you want a tutor or something? That could. That could be really nice, yeah. I, uh, you know, I, I could, I could pay you if you want. Um, yeah, uh, but... my standard rates are way outside of your scale. Just come on in. <laughs> oh well, thank you. Um, I don't suppose I could trouble you for a piece of that. I, I, I basically bought uh, three computers in a couple of years just from doing tutoring. But uh, yeah, just come on in. And I'm sorry, what were you gonna say, Nick? Oh, I was just, uh, I don't suppose I could trouble you for a piece of that pizza as well. A little bit of murder comes into her eyes, and she <laughs> says, Oh, no, never mind. Like I said, you can't afford my prices. <laughs> but I I'll, guess we can uh, order you your own pizza. Go yeah, ahead and do that. Yeah, it's all on the council anyway. Girl, all do you right. want anything? <laughs> and I start to, to bring up a bunch of books and, like, physical science for dummies and that kind of thing. Like, well, luckily I have a couple of lesson plans still tucked away on my old server. 
Oh, did you yeah. used to teach? Tutor. Ah, yeah. Duh. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm... It's part of why I wasn't in uh, academia, academia. They said that I lacked a human touch, which I found pretty offensive, personally. But uh, let's not go into that. I'll see. I'm just thinking about like pizza and Starfinder, right? Like, first off, like who made pizza? Like who, who <laughs> created pizza and Starfinder? But second off, imagine a Kasatha making pizza. That would be awesome. Oh my god! Oh my god! So be the Kasatha cool. then. I require artists <laughs> now. I imagine yeah, they... it was the, the Taldens, probably about a uh, six thousand AR. Uh... <laughs> well, I was gonna say, or or pizza arrived in the Pact Worlds on the Adari. Yes. <laughs> like the the yeah. Kasathans showed up so like like tossing pizza dough and people were like, what the heck is this? Pizza dough. Yeah. <laughs> Thought it was a weapon. Yeah. That's the, Kasoth the Kasothan battle dance is just how you make pizza. <laughs> <laughs> um Gur is Gur is actually gonna spend his his night and the rest of the next day if nobody comes and gets him on the ship. Oh, huh? okay. All right, yeah, we have that, too. All right. Where do you think Mouse got her little mousy slippers? Right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, is, that, is that everything for today? Sure. Yeah, sure. Okay. I'm satisfied. <laughs> so, the next day comes, and uh, Kaylin, are you, are you going to are you gonna go to Chroma? Are you going to invite people to come with you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll... I'll... Um, I will let these guys know over breakfast that, um, well, at least I'll help Haraldge, um, that I found this, this race, we can make, um, be a quick way to make some credits. I suppose, but you can't change your face. Mouse <laughs> looks at the, um at the poster and goes Ooh. <laughs> wait but we don't have a race oh Kaylin did a bit of racing in her youth <clears throat> so the 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 competition is taking place at the holodrome uh which uh anybody who is from the archipelago knows is a like like a vr arcade uh so oh, the gosh. competition is actually going to take place in virtual reality perfect Oh, so she wouldn't even have to, like, go anywhere public? No, she needs to go to the holodrome, but... Uh, all right, but why don't I try to put together a little disguise for you? It'll be hard, because your skin is very rigid, but um, I can probably figure something out. <laughs> I think everybody's skin is rigid compared to her own. It's very strange. I guess at this it point, Gert messages true. the group to find out what's going on. No, we're eating dinner. Didn't get, you get the SMS? And the by ship. dinner, I mean breakfast. I, oh, I suppose if you had messaged about everybody getting breakfast, I'm there. Never mind. I didn't hear that part. At the space VI. Yeah, I, I imagine we just show back up at the at the hotel, get breakfast. All right. Um, cool, yeah. So yeah, then, Chroma... Um, Gur, is, Gur is way into this, then, if he's there. Yeah, so Chroma is actually like kind a of a... Pancakes as tall as mouse. <laughs> That's probably Ninden, honestly. Ninden has a mouse-sized stack as well, yes. Yeah, I, was, I would assume so. <laughs> yeah. Uh, gotta power that entropic ability. And <laughs> you know what? Entropy requires a lot of food consumption. Uh, pancakes are really good for it. Yes. All the carbs. Top tier. Top tier mm. entropy powering food. Uh, second food. only to oh, only to pizza. We'll say. Okay, gotcha. Pizza's number uh, one. Pancakes number yeah. two. Honestly, pancake. Well, just, pancake. Just a sweet pizza. You're right. You're right. <laughs> Not wrong. Oh no. And then syrup is the sauce. Mm -hmm. It's a sweet sauce. Cream is the topping. You might say. All right. Well, I'll see you all later. <laughs> <laughs> I did it. I, did, I said the really bad joke. Um, so yeah, Chroma. Uh, to anybody who is not aware, 
is a small dome that is not governed by anyone in particular. It's it's kind of like a shared dome. Uh, it is home to a number of arenas, stadiums, and auditoriums. It's basically just like the entertainment place. So it's a it's a prime spot to go if you're if you're visiting the archipelago. Nice. We can get in some sightseeing while we're while we do this thing. Yeah. Sort of show the newbies around. Yeah. Would you guys like to yeah, take, take care of anything or head straight to Chroma? Got to disguise Does everyone. Any... Do we disguise oh, okay. everyone? <laughs> yeah. No, we must not get any credit for anything. I think this is going to be my whole first all right, all right, signal all right. of screams thing. Over no. over breakfast. <laughs> This, um, we're drawing a lot of attention to ourselves. Do we... Yes. Yes, we are. Comes with the whole heroic actions business. Right. Maybe we should do less of that? No, you, got, you guys just need to have less rigid skin. It's very inconvenient. Harald, we've talked about this. Everybody else can't just. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. It's it wasn't an issue Captain... at Pinnacle because we, you know, Pinnacle takes the credit. The individual agents didn't. We need to. I don't know. Maybe if we were operating as on behalf of some other organization, we could just uh, sort Perhaps. of blend in with them. Oh, you mean like the job offer that we got from the CSA? Or CSI. DCI. 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 <laughs> Deep Cultures Institute. Might be the way to go. And no one takes them seriously anyway. Which I think is a feature, not a bug. <laughs> Could very well be. All right. So why don't we just uh, use that as cover? Uh, you know, well, I'll, I'll put together some sort of disguise for you, Kaylin, since you'll probably be, uh, the, most of the cameras will be on you, and we'll just register ourselves as the, the, the DCI team, and no one will Ger, even look at us. Ger crosses his arms and gives a little bit of a huff, kind of indignified. I, I can pilot you, you know. Yes, I'm oh, sure you can. Um... Just, just saying, two heads are better than one. Two two race cars are better than one. That's fair. That's fair. That is true. Entering two people would it, it does increase our our chances. Um, if yeah. you want to enter as well. All right. That's... I don't think disguises will be necessary. I'm tired of hiding from Pinnacle already. So am I, and I'm not even hiding from Pinnacle. <laughs> Actually, just as kind of a. Uh, kind of a, an aside uh you know just from your past um exposure and working with pinnacle that uh public assassinations and that sort of thing is not really their thing so right if that's, you have that's a high kind enough, of where if you have Kaelin's a high head enough is profile then yeah they probably won't touch you specifically because of that yeah at this point um, yeah, that's sort of what Kaylin's saying. Is she's like, our faces are are out there. Like, our laying low is sort of done now that that news crew has um, has nice. caught us. That's enough for any of the train agents at Pinnacle to know we're we're alive if anybody's looking. Yeah, um, it's like you know, you you've snuck into the armor, and now there's nothing they can do about it necessarily uh, out in the open anyway. So as long as you're not stupid about what you do you're probably okay for the time being right and they might come after us but we have a we've put anyway back in, in character mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um i assumed this was in character <laughs> talking to the gm oh no yeah. like the things that you're Hi. saying so some guy literally <laughs> rises up from the table and starts like just discussing this logic with kaylin fine yes fine and then he slides back underneath the table anyway was that mysterious if pinnacle master. is looking for us they've if anybody's looking, they know we're here. Mm. And honestly, we can put my reputation to use. They're not going to come after us in public. I see. Harald leans back in his chair and thinks. Uh, does that mean that we should 
get in touch with the council and sort of reverse our decision. If you think that uh, notoriety can be our shield. It could be. You're, uh, you're better at the dramatic reveals, so I'll leave that to you. All right. You can hit me with a culture check, uh, Simon. Oh, I will. 26. Yeah, uh, that that makes sense. Uh, honestly, if you if you're viewed publicly uh, not only as as a celebrity but as actual heroes, that might make it difficult for a Pinnacle to maneuver against you. All right, um, that makes sense. I'm not sure how what identity Harald story. wants to tie to the story, though. <laughs> right. Might as well use Trent. It could be even Harald, wouldn't that be? Uh, Harald would want to be Harald. I'm not sure if it would, if if uh, that would be the smartest move for Kaelin to suggest he takes. Since a key component, uh, one of the key advantages of being an Estrazoan is like people not knowing what you can do. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. Uh, so does Kaylin have advice on this, or...? Not, not off the top of my head. Um, but we can cross that bridge when we get to it. Well, I think yeah. we're there Consider now. the issue tabled. No, I, I think we have to decide now. So I, I guess I guess Harald will just uh uh well, like we have to report to the council, right? We are done with the council for the time being unless we go back and tell them something different. And I guess we can defer that. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, she did give you the ability to just kind of leave unannounced once you convinced her. The um what's her name? Going back and forth here. So important. Right. And we can... Mrs. So important she doesn't have a portrait. Yes. Inona Norvar. Yeah, there you oh, go. You're good. Uh, uh, well, you you thanks. I, <laughs> I can read. <laughs> <laughs> we can sort of control our own PR on this. Right? We don't need to um, tell the council, oh, never mind. We we do want to be recognized. We just win, win the race today. Um. And sort of and and let it build from there. We could even mention to people at that point that we were the ones who helped out there, right. and then people will ask her if we can tell her yes. You could tell yes, her yes, yes. No, this is all coming together. It yes, have to be a whole yes. Thing. And you can keep being whoever you like, Harold. Uh, Harold shrinks a bit. Well, I don't know what I. Uh, uh, we we can we can cross that bridge when we come to it. Uh, yes, yes, yes. You can sign up for the biker race as as one of the heroes of Horizon House, and we'll go from there. Yeah, we can use it to sort of spin that up. Um, let we should let um Anona know that if she gets any questions, it's okay to mention who we are. She's gonna see you as far as star, isn't she? Harold shrugs. Well, she saw him transform into Zaylin Trinipal. She knows he can change shapes. He she did do that. Yeah. Does. Yep. Yeah, he did that in front of every council member. <laughs> yeah, that cat might be out of the bag. Um, <laughs> That's, that has already escaped. We're going to put Harald in charge of, of handling the, that. <laughs> that cat has already escaped and is puking on the carpet. <laughs> no, <Yeah>. kitty, no. <laughs> That cat has already escaped and transformed into a dog. <laughs> so let's go check out this uh, this uh, holodome. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we go to the yeah. adventure. Okay. I like holodomes. <laughs> All right. So uh, it's a brief hop over on the lion crawler, and we get to Chroma. Um, it's easy Land of for, arenas. For once, you're able to actually take your time and casually stroll through the streets of Dawnshore. Uh, the gleaming geometrical buildings shine under the constant barrage of sunlight. And when you get to the lion crawler, it's a welcome sight. This one is crowded with all sorts of people, 
And considering it's headed to Chroma, it's full of mostly people who seem excited or at least anticipatory. Um, Chroma is a smallish dome, as I mentioned before, not governed by any specific body. Uh, most of the other domes are managed by local governments, which is why Asana Town and Donshore are two separate entities. And uh, Donshore didn't intervene on the Asana Town thing until they, they were specifically requested uh, of assistance. Um, but yeah, Chroma, as I mentioned before, is home of a number of arenas, stadiums, event hubs, and most importantly to some, racetracks. Uh, there's actually a racetrack that goes along the inside of the dome. Uh, above most of the buildings that you can see. And that is the Ooh. one that the Burning Ring uh, circuit takes place on. Let's see, uh, let's, uh, just just for fuzzies, uh, let's see if Kaylin can, can do anything to um, contain. Can do uh, anything exciting. to What? Oh, very excited. I'm, I'm not excited. You're excited. Oh, you're trying to hide that she's excited? I mean, she's been here a lot before, uh -huh. but like, there's that... I'm home kind of a feeling. Right. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure that Kaylin spent a lot of time in Chroma when she didn't have other stuff to do. Like, mm -hmm. this is this is just like, this is just where the youth goes, you know? Like, this is the mall of the 80s. Um, <laughs> the mall of the 80s, yes. Yeah. Uh, there's no room for cars uh, on the roads, at least ex uh, right outside of the lion crawler. Uh, the uh, Public transit buses uh, people from one place to another uh, between towering metallic buildings. Uh, there are huge billboards hanging between said buildings and banners decorating the sides, all advertising different events uh, upcoming and happening today. Uh, you see ads for Pact Alliance Wrestling. Uh, you see a concert for a Trox singer named Golden Shell. And uh, you see a gladiatorial event coming up featuring a Bantrid named Zerp as a headlining uh, member. And other and such it, things. And it's sponsored uh, by Black Milk, of course. Yeah, Black Milk. Uh, yummy, yummy. Uh, unfertilized black spider eggs. Uh, Can still taste them. In your tummy. Yes, they <laughs> tangle all the way down. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, uh, as you as you walk along, you know, you see all kinds of like merchants peddling cheap wear, like shirts and, and like little toys and games and stuff like that. And there's all kinds of places to go to eat, and it's it's just a it's just an absolute uh, hedonistic pleasure dome, basically, is what you're dealing with. Awesome. I mean, how how do how do Ninden and Gur react to this? Like, are there, are there any like gyms around though? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, there's gyms. Uh, maybe not so many here. Uh, you, you might find one or two, but that's more relegated to where people live. Um, Ninden scoffs at the sight of uh, a little tiny Bantrid being a gladiator. Um, of course. Yes. Uh, so does <laughs> For laugh about um, it. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, also Ninden's eyes are generally like wide as dinner plates taking in everything. Mm -hmm. Um, just sort of maybe even just feeling a little overwhelmed by all the uh, sensory overload go going on. Yeah. So uh, as you continue along, do do do. Boom! Check it out. More custom art. Ha ha. Woo! Woo! I do things sometimes. Uh, so uh, finding a way to the holodrome is not difficult. Uh, What's more difficult is passing up all the different vendors along the way. Um, all kinds of crazy multicultural smells assaulting you from all sides. Um, guys, guys, nom, there's nom, a zerp banner over there. <laughs> <laughs> Eventually, as you round the corner, mm -hmm. there it is. A large building of cylindrical design that uh, terminates in a conical shape on the top, and capped with a ring that displays various holographic screens of different games currently being played live. Uh, signs indicate that the algorithmic compositions competition is inside, but it looks like you're an hour and a half early or so, so signups are still taking place. Uh, you've made it just in time, basically. Kaylin probably is arriving later than she would like to. <laughs> considering oh, yeah. Exactly. There's only an hour and a half until the competition starts. That's like, you, you might as well be late. Uh, gosh, <laughs> dang it. Yeah, because if you're not early, you're late. Mm -hmm. You know what they say, two hours know. early is early. 
<laughs> one hour <laughs> really is late. On time is unacceptable. Yeah, the uh, the doorway is is large. Think like twenty feet high, and uh, and it's open, uh, letting the sounds of games, music, uh, etc., pour out into the streets. Uh, um, Caitlin level... will find the signups. Sorry, I'll let you finish your your description. Well, uh, you guys are still entering the, faci the facility. Mm -hmm. Uh, the light level is considerably lower inside, uh, giving a uh, your eyes a break from the constant uh, assault of sunlight outside. Uh, on the ground level near the entrance, there are concierge de desks. How do you pronounce that? Concierge? Concierge? concierge. Con concierge. You pronounce the G? Uh, English people pronounce the G. I don't know if it is in French. I don't speak French. Con concierge? Yeah, okay. French, you just oh. leave off the ending. <laughs> you just leave first, everything say the out. first two letters and then mumble the rest. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. oh no! Either way, there are two desks uh, flanking the left and the right side, uh, where you can attach your credit account to key fobs to, to use for playing all the different games here. Um, and beyond the desks is a multi-leveled arcade, multiple floors going up to different circular platforms, all full of people enjoying different kinds of games. Um, towards the outer edges are some of the larger games that have more physical elements to them, like cockpits encased in gyroscopes, laser tag arenas, rows of faux racing vehicles, and many other space gobbling features. Uh, so it's it's crazy. So this so, so this is Space Dave and Buster's. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. got it. Space and Buster's. Space, space and Buster's. Buster's. I, don't, I don't know. This... Dave and Buster's. <laughs> Gross. Spleef no, and spleefters. No. <laughs> we're we're going too far. Concierge. Okay. Come on, guys. We all know it's called Blitz. Uh, I'll go up to the uh, the concierge there. Um, excuse me. Where are the signups for uh, for the race? Oh yeah. Uh, they point back to the most recent iteration of the uh, racing series. Um, I actually have it listed. Ah, uh, I'll find it in my notes eventually. Um, oh, Forma, Forma Hover Sport Pact is is the the new version of it, um, and uh, the signups are taking place next to the booth where the actual games will be will be held. So if Kaylin is interested in signing up, Perfect. that's where she will Thank to go. Thank you. Mm -hmm. She'll go over there. Um, right. I I assume key in her information her own information proudly she's done with this hiding stuff mm -hmm. so yeah stick it to the man with some title of cure of the horizon house considering that we have arrived at the hollow drome i think this might be a good time to take a break uh because this is where the Ooh. bulk of the episode is to take place so uh i guess we'll take a 15 minute break and we'll be back at the top of the hour yes all right so yes, everybody, uh, feel free to get up, uh, sample the bathroom, the facilities, uh, <laughs> consume some snacks, and we will be here uh, when you return. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back, everyone. I hope that you all had a wonderful time in the restroom. I know I did. How, how about you guys? The best time. It was a good call. <laughs> I'd prefer not to say. <laughs> he says with, with tiny pupils and a look of absolute terror in his eyes. Um, <laughs> yeah, when we left off, uh, our our uh, heroes of the, the, the crew of the Fortune's Fool have... Uh, made their way to the Holodrome, a, uh, just a massive arcade full of all kinds of games spanning from different eras of, of post-gap, uh, all kinds of crazy obstacle courses, uh, simulation-style games. Uh, there's just anything you could possibly want to do here. Uh, it's here, and 
it's crazy. Um, but yeah, Kaylin has just finished uh, signups uh, at the at the race track essentially, and uh, Kaylin, you kind of for some reason you feel compelled to check out the other uh, racing cabinets. Uh, the the one that you're going to be playing on, uh, Forma Hover Sport Pact, uh, is main stage, like center stage. This is where everyone's going to be watching. But off to the sides, there are the older versions and such. Uh, the amount of cabinets that there were uh, have been kind of pared down to smaller levels. So people who want to play the older games have something that they can do, but they definitely don't draw in the same audience that they used to. So no reason for them to take as much space, but. Right. You, hey, you, you, Gert, since you don't have a record, you want to see if you can beat me on one of these old ones? You're on. Um, <clears throat> as I you head over. I could probably hack the system and give you a false identity if you oh. wish. Just saying. Ger, Ger strokes his chin for a second and then kind of uh, shakes his head. He says, uh, I, I think uh, I think we, we want to not risk that. We might all get kicked out of that if we get caught. Fine. Play by the rules. Um, I don't, he, and he leans in really close to Mouse and says, I just don't want to ruin it for Galen. You know, she looked really excited. I know she was, she hit it really well, but she just looked so excited. <laughs> oh, okay. Kaylin is glaring. Yeah, no, actually, now that I've looked into it, it really would be way too is... hard for me. <laughs> <laughs> does my herald, is my herald bullshit sense starting to extend to these guys? <laughs> I think it might be. Like, his is what, a plus four? Maybe theirs is like a plus two? Right. <laughs> um, so... If you if you head over to the uh, other lesser used games, you do see that there is one individual sitting at one of the cabinets, just solitarily uh, finishing off uh, probably some sort of time lap or something like that. Um, and you feel strangely drawn to them. You can't exactly tell why. Well, it's like a is this like a plot strings attached to me? Uh, do I know any? Do I know this person? Uh, my uh, my theme power does reduce DCs about, you know, famous pilots by five. Uh, do you want, do you care to approach? Yeah, yeah, we're going over to the cabinet anyway, like, we're, we're thinking about doing our own little race. Sure, sure. So um, it's most, like, yeah. So, as you approach, uh, you don't need to make a check. Uh, okay. The individual that you see is somebody who you might have had a poster of at some point. Uh, <gasps> this is actually a Kalo named uh, Michele Tideweaver. <gasps> he is uh, most famous for winning his first major circuit race, the the Vicene Run on uh, Rathetta, which is often uh, often known amongst the packed worlds as the most dangerous race in existence. Uh, his name has been associated with hover sports and many other brands, including fashionable station wear and uh, anything related to, to the, uh, to, to, you know, his interests. Uh, and it looks as though he's finished his run because his hands rise up from the controls and pull the VR visor from his helmet. And he sits up and he looks, his head slowly turns to look directly at you. Caleb might stop breathing. Um, mm -hmm. Nope, nope, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a grown up and I'm cool. Um, Hmm. So cool. Um, as he sees your hesitation, his head just kind of tilts a little bit. Uh, you've seen him in interviews and such. He's kind of seen as as uh, a little aloof. He he often does not show any kind of expression. Uh, but people who meet him in person indicate that they somehow can kind of. They, they understand his emotion a little bit just from meeting him, but it's not something that carries over camera. Um, I would like you to make a will save. Sure. Huh. I'm pretty good at will saves. What oh, yeah. um, <clears throat> You notice that uh, 
it seems like he attempted to uh, read your thoughts. I, um, with my telepathic message, I say, you know, it's rude to read people's thoughts, right? He just, uh, he raises his brow slightly and he raises up from his seat and he just nods his head. My apologies. Don't worry about it. Uh, do you want to? We were gonna have a little, uh, a little race. Do you, uh, do you want to join us? He raises his brow again and says, "I don't think that that's something you would like me to do." I mean, you'll probably wipe the floor with me, but um, assuredly. Uh, I'd like to see how close I get. He gives just a very. Like, like you, you would also, also almost have to make like a DC twenty perception check to notice the very slight upwards curvature of one side of his mouth. <laughs> so, uh, I'm more likely to make that than not. <laughs> that's true, <laughs> which is why I'm giving it to you. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, he he says that's fine. I prefer to race solo. I assume you're here for the competition. I. I am. Are are you racing today? He shakes his head. He says, I assume that if you're here, you probably know who I am. And you probably know that I already have a team. I don't need to enter a competition to be sponsored. That That's fair. Well... It was a, it's a pleasure, pleasure to meet you. Uh, he he just kind of observes you for a moment longer, and uh, despite the fact that you rebuffed his his ability to detect thoughts, you you feel some sort of strange connection. It's almost as if uh, he's doing some sort of reverse empathy. Uh, his you you can feel his emotions in your own head, and <clears throat> you figure that he probably uh, can can feel how you're feeling as well. And he, and he, uh, he, he remarks, what's your name? Oh, I, uh, Kaylin Ward. Ward. Hmm. I haven't heard that name before, but you seem pretty capable. I, I think you'll probably do just fine. Uh, I've been out of, I've been out of the game for, for, uh, a few years now. I raced a bit in college, but, uh, you know. Got a career, got out of the habit. But he, he motions at the other racers, the other prospective racers, and uh, he, he says, "These, these children, they they're too excited, they're too scared. You, there's something a little different about you. I don't know what it is, but I feel hmm. he can't quite finish what he intends to say." But uh, he gestures to the seat that he just left and said, please, if you'd like to play, go ahead. Thanks. Gurry, you ready to be demolished? <laughs> we'll see who demolishes who. And he cracks his fingers and sits down and like just kind of blanks and, as he stares at the controls. He has never played a video game in his life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh Oh no. Caitlin noticing him uh, stop at the go, uh, 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 shows him the, the basics, um, how it sort of relates to an uh, right. actual starship setup. Fantastic. So, yeah, the, these, um, these uh, games, Forma Hover Sport, is recognized as being the most accurate uh, uh, simulation of hover bike racing. Uh, so, it's it's a lot like riding an actual hover bike in terms of using the the console. So uh, learning how to use one of these would teach you like probably eighty percent of what you would need to know to start riding one in real life, if not more. But yeah, uh, if we want to do just like a little friendly little race, I'm sure we could just do like a series of pilot checks to to kind of figure out who who does best. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do we want to do um... a roll off? Like a maybe like a series of three. Yeah, sure. Let's do let's do three piloting checks. Let's see who comes out on top. 
All right. All right. Kay only gets a 15 on the first one. That's not so hot. And Gur gets a nine. <laughs> oh, so she's still ahead. Ha ha. <laughs> and then on the second one, Kaylin gets a 25. Oh no, I'm not going to get that unless oh, I. Oh, leave a girl in the dust. <laughs> out of 15, finally figured out the control. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and then our final one's a, our Ooh. final check's a 23. So yeah. Versus an 18, Gurf finishes not in last place at least if there's bots. <laughs> Probably not. No. Uh, he beats yeah. the bots. <laughs> he, beats, he beats the bots. Uh, he starts out kind of rough, but, uh, you know, Gur eventually manages to get the hang of it and is able to at least see the taillights of, of uh, Kaylin's uh, race bike by the time the race is over. <laughs> <laughs> he, and he is addicted. Way to go, Kaylin. I hope you're proud. Uh, it occurs to you. did a pretty good you, job, Gur. Well done. Uh, thanks. That was a lot of fun. Uh, uh, Best two out of three. <laughs> sure, sure. Are you two out of three. feeling okay, buddy? You look kind of... <laughs> his, his hands are shaking a little bit. Um, yeah, it, fine. It actually, it occurs to you now that you've uh, been uh, playing it, Kaylin, that probably the reason why Michaela was over here playing this game is mm -hmm. because uh, this actually features the hover bike that he... Uh, has been on record saying is his favorite, uh, the Vertec oh. F37, uh, which is no longer featured in the latest version of Forma Hover Sport. So he's probably doing this. He was probably doing it out of personal preference. That and makes you, sense. Being a gearhead, you probably understand the, mm -hmm. the intricacies of the Vertec F37. Like, who doesn't, right? Right, obviously. Yeah. Well, and, you know, once you learn it, a specific bike or a ship or anything inside and out like it, uh -huh. it's special and you can usually get more out of it than you might be able to get from a bike that might technically be better but you don't know it as intricately and yeah yeah Kaylin can go on about this forever yeah yeah, yeah. you know and like the Vertec <laughs> f37 for whatever reason was the last model that had the horizontal swoop gyro which they right? removed in the right. f40 which, they did and it's yeah. just it hasn't been as good since then no <laughs> But Budget cuts. <laughs> Kaylin sits Budget there cuts, talking you know? to herself and Gur just kind of stares. <laughs> what is she doing? Yeah, you should have had this be Michaela. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, does anybody else want to try and find something to do at the arcade while they're here? Yeah, because Kaylin and Gur are going to do mm. two out of three while we wait for the race, I guess. Are, are there some sort of acrobatic... Uh, like, you know, obstacle courses or something, virtual obstacle I, courses. I heard obstacle course at one point. Yes! Okay. Ninden would like to do that, and he would invite Mouse as well. Oh, you're on! Mouse, <laughs> he's playing Dance Dance Revolution. Like, <laughs> but she's like, it's it's absent-mindedly. Like, sure. Uh -huh. She's just sort of like dancing and then like waiting for everyone else to decide what to do. Just like, you guys ever see that Bugs Bunny cartoon where he's like playing the guitar and he's like completely dead from like the waist up, but his legs are hopping around? <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> like, it's, it's, like, it's like Mouse is completely stiff as a board from like the waist up, but her legs are just going crazy as she just stares straight forward. Do, 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 do. <laughs> yeah. Like that, 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 um, the one, the dance, dance revolution with dance from Fallout Four, where his legs are going. Yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, all of these um, things. So, like an obstacle course, right? I mean, uh, you, you can just like uh, you, you see that there's there's a couple different kinds. Like there's there's like, I, have you ever been in an arcade like when you're just a little too old to go in like the play pen? And no. You're. <laughs> <laughs> Never. And you're just like, why don't they make one for me? Well, they did, and it's here. So, like, you oh. know, you're you're dealing with a a uh, like a, an adult size, maybe not quite Vesk size, but you could probably make it work. Uh, sort of situation yes. where uh -huh. there's a series of different like triangle jumps that you could do, or if you're not good at that, there's like rope climbing and that sort of thing. But there's a number of various ways to to get to the top to ring the bell. So if you two want to have a race to the top, we can do a roll off between you two to see who, who manages yeah. to make it to the, the bell first. Oh yeah. Uh, but it will start with an athletics check uh, to, oh, to get up to, damn it. the initial climb. 
<laughs> Mouse, I see you as a worthy opponent. Best of luck. I hate you so much right now. <laughs> it's an 18 from Ninden. Oh, oh, oh my, my god! god. <laughs> she rolled a nat 20! Yes. Uh, so Ninden go, rolled Mouse, an 18, go. and Ma Mouse rolled a natural 20 on athletics. So she just, just kind of spat on both her hands and then, like, leaped at the, leapt at the rope and just shimmied up it. <laughs> yeah, Ninden kind of, like, taking, like, the, the tortoise approach, like, oh, this is fine, I can handle this. Mouse just, for whatever yeah. reason, manages to, to scoot right past him. It's not like... I mean, I suppose scoot, natural scoot. 20, she probably... She probably blazes right past you. Um, yeah. From this point, uh, you notice that there are a series of ramps that, that go up along the sides that have little leaps and handholds uh, for somebody who's more acrobatically inclined. Meanwhile, uh, there's another side that's just like a rock wall sort of thing. Or there's rope ladders that are inverted, so you have to climb sort of upside down. Like, there's oh. all kinds of ways to get up. Uh, okay. I'm assuming Mel's probably wants to do acrobatics. <laughs> yeah. uh, Ninden also wants to do acrobatics, Ooh. so... Uh... He'll he'll go to the station that Mouse is not going up. Okay. Woof. Uh, that's uh, a twenty for Ninden. Oh dear. Uh, uh, Mouse rolled a total of nineteen. All right. So yeah, Mouse kind of got ahead of Ninden yeah. a little bit, but then with his massive size and superior vesk acrobatic prowess, um, <laughs> seems to leap and bound his way past the the much smaller Mouse. Um, Mm. And doing uh, sweet flips. <laughs> uh, here uh, you get another couple of options. Uh, like you can do. Uh, there's there's a, a wall that like two walls kind of next to each other that one could either use acrobatics to triangle jump up, or you could use athletics to like press one set of limbs to one side and one to the other and kind of climb up that way. Or there's uh, uh, an inverted ramp that is like a downwards escalator that you have to run up in order to, to gain uh, speed, which would also be an acrobatics check. Acrobatics! Nenden's going to try the uh, athletic option of uh, triangle jumping up the wall. Okay, doke. Is that athletic or uh, acrobatic? Whatever, you know, either or. Rolled a total um, of 16. Oh, no. I'll roll athletics because I said I would. Her tiny little legs. Oh, oh no! no! <laughs> so Ninden, thinking he's going to be really cool, he got a 15. Um, I think he's going to be really cool. Leaps at the wall, tries to push backwards off of it, doesn't get quite the right amount of force, and so he just sort of like ineffectively kicks the wall a little bit uh -huh. and falls back to the ground. Sure, sure. And before before trying and succeeding, I guess. Yes, so he loses a little bit of time to Mouse, so she's just a little bit ahead, but uh, you both kind of close to the same time get up to one of the last obstacles, which is uh, the platform uh, with the bell on it. Now, there is a rotating set of uh, platforms that spin around the outside of it, and you need to time a jump uh, in order to get onto that rotating platform in order to reach the bell. So I will need a reflex save. Oh! Ooh, hoo, hoo. Uh, that. Ooh, I got a 25 for my oh. reflex save. That's yeah. my second 19 of this obstacle course. Yeah. Uh, 16. Yep, Total. you both managed to get onto the platform uh, adequately, and I will say at this point it's just an acrobatics or an athletics check to either leap or scramble up the side of the platform to ring the bell. Acrobatics! Ooh. Ninden leaps his arms outstretched. Oh, no! And gets a 17. Oh. Yeah, well, a mouse rolled a 10, so... <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, Ninden, just barely, because Mouse was just slightly ahead of him before, just manages to, to get his hand on top of the bell, and then a tiny, pale hand slaps on top of his big, scaly hand. Oh. Almost immediately. <laughs> <laughs> ding, ding, ding! Um, internally thinking to himself, wow, that was a lot more challenging to beat her than <laughs> I, I initially thought it should have been. Um, Ninden turns to Mouse and holds out a hand for a handshake. That was a very Mouse, good race. Mouse shakes his hand, but with bad taste. Like, just, she's, she's just not a good loser. She's very competitive. Mm. And so it's mm. just like, 
Yeah, fine, sure, whatever. <laughs> My hands were sweaty. <laughs> My hands were sweaty. <laughs> and they, there was no way to adjust for the fact that you are taller than me. Mm, yeah, well, some of these obstacles course weren't is... actually made for me, uh, made for people of my stature. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> yeah, I love how this devolved into immediately into a, oh yeah, well I'm too small for the obstacles, and the other ones, I'm too big for the obstacles. <laughs> <laughs> I think you both did great. They, like I like to think <laughs> that you, as one. Oh well. Fine, Ninden can be high road, but Mouse will just turn and death glare at the captain. <laughs> that seems on brand for both characters, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Herald, would you like to do anything? Would you like to maybe check out any of the arcade games? Or are you just content watching the crew do all their stuff? Um, Herald, and... yeah, Herald likes people watching a lot, so he'll, like, watch his crew and cheer them on, and then, like, sort of look at other people, and then maybe near the tail end, he'll, like, uh, idly and guiltily scroll through the news feeds for, to make sure that the whole, uh, 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 Asuratown thing is sorting, Asanatown is sorting itself out all right. Oh, yeah. Uh, so Asana Town, uh, with the assistance of, of neighboring domes, uh, they, they've been able to uh, uproot the Sunrise Collective. Uh, some reports are starting to come out about what was going down in the, essentially the internment camps that were going on. And the reports are kind of grim, but uh, it seems like the, the count, the casualty count is relatively low and nobody in these internment camps were being executed. It was just like poor treatment. All of the ca casualties were combat related uh, between uh, like isolated incidents in the street between uh, concerned citizens or even police officers uh, fighting the, the Sunrise Collective. But it seems like things have calmed down and it's gonna take some time for things to get back to normal, uh, but they are on a healing path, it would seem. Herald is relieved by this. Yeah. So you're saying pretty much everybody who died, we killed? Well, there were other fights, but... There were other fights, but you, you definitely contributed to the count a little bit. There. We had a disproportionate lethality. <laughs> I think that we did a good job of, like, not killing people, but yeah, Herald feels bad Gurr about the only, ones we killed. I think Girl only killed... Um, three people before you got to Horizon House. Then things got just kind of crazy. Uh, well, to be fair, Horizon three. House threw a whole mountain of baddies at us. <laughs> and hey, uh, hey, that was supposed to happen in sequence. <laughs> <laughs> supposed to happen clearly is not how things actually happen on this show. It's yeah. so <laughs> true. It's so true. But, alright, so, uh, if Harald does not want to do any additional or, or, or partake of any of the games. Uh, we can do one more little uh, little race between Gur and, and Kaelin, uh, but uh, the time of the race is fast approaching. Yeah, that's okay. We don't need that. Yeah, Actually yeah, can... roll dice for it. They just I imagine they do two out of three. Just, yeah. Yeah. Maybe, maybe Gur gets one. Uh, probably not, but yeah, maybe. <laughs> or gets really close. <laughs> I love that. Probably not. <laughs> Probably not. He, he tries, bless his heart. <laughs> he tries really hard. Competition he... tells us something about all of our characters. Hey. Feeling uh... is very supportive when Gur loses. <laughs> tells him everything he did right. Um... And Gur is controlling his anger and not smashing the machine. Definitely hitting it, though. <laughs> his, his anger. Um... Oh, no. Oh. Yeah. Uh... Uh... Yeah, Gurr feels like if he encountered one of these hover bikes in person, he would probably be able to drive it at this point. Like, <laughs> it's like I, 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 I know how to, I know how to drive one of these. Yeah, I've driven one before. <laughs> I learned to that's play by playing. Or I learned to drive by playing video games. Hey, that, yeah, that's dangerous. Hey, that's something that I learned how to do in real life. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, right. like the, the little the driving games at the arcade are, aren't aren't half bad for informing how to drive at least. Mm -hmm. Should probably also have some other instruction. But... Yeah, they don't usually teach you how to like merge carefully. 
Yeah, it's, it's how to more behave on a... you don't learn, like how to merge. And <laughs> how to do that stuff and go traffic. But... Well, I also know that I can, if I need to like quickly make a turn, I can bounce off of a wall. Um, oh, yeah, absolutely. 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 It'll damage yeah. the car, which is a little bit no, more problematic. It doesn't, you know? no, it doesn't bounce it's... the car. It, do, it doesn't damage the car. It just bounces off of the wall and goes the other direction. Yeah, cars That's can't what... be damaged. What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> what? What has technology so anyway. done to you? Okay. <laughs> so as everybody's uh, having fun, uh, playing some games around the holodrome, uh, enjoying them like they might enjoy a bathroom in real life, um, <laughs> the uh, uh, you suddenly hear an announcement come up from the from the Forma Hover Sport uh, stage. Uh, one of the uh, algorithmic compositions employees in one of their signature track suits taking to the microphone and saying, "Participants, it's time to find out who has what it takes to represent algorithmic compositions. Please take your positions, and we will get started." All right. Wish me luck, guys. You've got this. Yeah, so uh, esports are... Ooh, you're so cool! <laughs> uh, Mouse has a giant foam hand that <laughs> says she number one with Kaylin. <laughs> she won a um, bunch of tickets playing DDR, and she took them and traded yeah. them for a giant foam finger. Duh. Yeah. <laughs> it's my foam finger! <laughs> It's somehow only as tall as the average head of a person in the audience when she holds it um, above her head. Well, on that note, uh, Ninden would actually offer to boost Mouse up onto his shoulders for a oh better view gosh. and also um, just for the adorableness of it. <laughs> oh Don't. my gosh. Not tell her that it's for the adorableness of it, and she'll no. take you up on that offer. No, he because would. He, he, it's... he wouldn't think of that. He would just be offering to help. <laughs> Yeah, uh -huh. like like for mouse, it would be more of like, yes, that is an adequate means to obtain the optimal height to view this event. <laughs> I would <laughs> like, see better way. from up there. This is an adequate <laughs> oh, method finally... to attain optimal height for viewing. I, I finally got it. <laughs> you mouse may place paradigm. me on your shoulders. <laughs> uh, well, good. Yes, uh, <laughs> careful. <laughs> Suddenly, you're like. What eight feet tall, Mouse? Yep, I am uh, seven foot three. I think I said. I don't know. I'm oh short gosh. for a mask. So huge. So she's uh, above eight feet. Yeah, she's way tall. Ah, this feels so natural. <laughs> I feel like I belong <laughs> up here. Uh, remind me. I'm gonna add to my uh, my list here. Check rules for killing things while riding other party members. <laughs> um. um I, I have some insight on that, having recently looked into a drone mechanic riding his own drone. But anyway, sorry. <laughs> but not, not right we'll now. We'll talk. Later. Yeah, we'll talk. So yeah, um, Kaylin, I assume that you approach one of the, uh, well, your designated station. Of course, of course, yes. So each one, kind of like the one that you were racing with Gur on uh, before, uh, has a replica bike with a VR headset attached. Uh, attendants regularly clean these stations after each race, so you can... Be reasonably certain it's not too gross. I think that Kaylin seems like she might be a bit token of a spell. freak. Yes. <laughs> token spell cleans it all. Oh, I love it. Oh, I love it. <laughs> um, sanitize. <laughs> sanitize things. Quick token spell. Everything's sanitized. When you take a seat and secure the headset, you're taken to the loading screen. Uh, it's brief, and you can hear the crowd cheer as the the words uh, traveling to Arl, downtown district. Uh, uh, show up on the screen. Um, everyone else, you can see what's happening on large monitors. They have like one monitor, like one really big one that is like the the spotlight uh, monitor. But there's a bunch of other ones keeping track of all the other racers too. Um, see, so it's like whoever's in the lead is probably on the like up on the big wall, or just right? so if something is if something interesting is happening. Interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you recognize the Arl uh, downtown circuit. Uh, it's the uh, Arl is the largest and oldest city in Akaton. Uh, its towering structures on the plateau it resides upon look over the desolate horizon. Uh, this raceway, a temporary track when the hover sports circuit comes to the planet, weaves perilously through the structures in a high adrenaline, high spectacle test of skill for any hover racer. 
Uh, it's commonly acknowledged as one of the more difficult races in the series. So it makes sense that this is the course that they would pick. Uh, well, well, I mean, it only makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right? Duh. Duh. <laughs> Duh. Um, Kaylin <clears throat> smiles a bit, though. I'm sure she's practiced this, uh, this run a couple of times. Oh, for sure. At least in uh, VR, if never in person. Yeah. So the, the course, starting next to the Vitari Tech Coliseum, uh, sees all of the 40 racers lining up on their hover cycles. Uh, you have only a moment to compose yourself before the countdown begins. Okay. Got this. So, um, what we're going to do for this is, the when the countdown begins, I will need you to make a reflex save to make sure that you accelerate your your hover bike at the correct moment got it so the countdown begins and oh yeah she gets a 23 uh, so yeah uh the moment that the countdown uh goes down uh, and hits hits zero the lights turn green kaylin just rockets off the start line immediately uh cementing herself as as one of the lead racers she's not alone there are other vehicles that are coming up alongside her, but uh, she is definitely ahead of the majority of the pack, at least at the very start of the race. She's and going the distance. Indeed. She's and going for speed, etc. <laughs> I actually forgot to change over to this. Check it out. I made a course. Um, Ooh. Ooh. So this is where she is currently. And... Uh, to your right is the Coliseum that you start next to, and you rocket past it, uh, immediately coming up on the first turn, which is a large embanked turn that kind of goes up over the side of the Coliseum so that people can look up and, and see the racers uh, circling around uh, above them. And you can look into the Coliseum at this, at this point. So, uh, Do you think it's worth throwing us... a token on the map to show where she is? Or... Oh. We could do that. That's not too hard. Yeah, I'll need to resize the thing. Um, no, that looks perfect. But you can... Yeah, that works. That works just fine. Yeah, so uh, as you enter this embanked turn, please uh, make a piloting check for me. And... Okay. 27. 27. Indeed. Uh, let's see here. You, you kind of slot yourself in with the other racers that are about at the same level as yourself, uh, kind of sliding in with the pack, uh, but gaining a couple positions as you make the turn. Because as any experienced racer knows, it's not about rocketing to the front. It's about shaving off seconds of your total time and positioning yourself advantageously to so take, that you overtake someone. Yeah. So the banked turn leads into a straightaway and then an easy curve. Uh, you're packed in with a group of racers uh, trying to get a, a feel for each other and uh, see how each other react. Uh, eventually, this slow turn will uh, wind into an upwards corkscrew, which is this spot right here. Um, oh, yeah, I've come all the way around. Okay. Yes, these are these are garbage turns. You don't need to check for these. These are easy. You don't need, yeah. It's all but included this... in that last one. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. uh, but this this particular thing is a corkscrew that winds around a cylindrical building, a skyscraper, several times, getting higher and higher. So you will need to maintain your turning arc throughout the entire upwards climb. I would mm -hmm. like a series of three piloting checks. Series of three. All right. All right. Here we go. We got. Ooh, that one's only a sixteen. You got it. Oh. And then a twenty-eight. You got that one. And then, uh, oh, oh no! <clears throat> okay. These are reroll guys. I rolled so a that's, one. That's a natural one. Actually, I'm going to tell you about a thing. So, uh, built into this little mini game I've concocted for this race, um, go ahead and make a reflex save. Okay. Okay. Twenty-three. Excellent. So, go ahead and reroll that piloting check. <gasps> Sixteen. Not quite enough, but you still manage to to salvage what would have what would have been a, an otherwise disastrous uh, end. So you watch as uh, Kaylin uh, starts to wait, make her way up the corkscrew, a very tight arc, until suddenly there's a little bit of a wobble, and she starts to careen to, towards the outside guardrail. Um, 
but you notice that she manages to to turn it like kind of counter steer and uh, kick in the acceleration just to right herself enough but she does kind of have an an ugly uh exit to the to the turn uh, oh no i probably perhaps, lost a little oh, bit no. of position perhaps you losing, got it, Karen. Uh, perhaps losing a second uh from her time oh no that's a so, huge amount of time it is all right, racer, all right. refocuses refocuses all right so uh she makes it down uh to a downward slope that comes to a hard turn uh, now Ooh. this one is a very a very sudden stop so you'll need to make a reflex save to make sure that you apply the brakes at the appropriate time all right all right and she gets a 17. Okay, you're able to slow down in time, but now the challenge is to adequately accelerate through the apex of the turn. So With please make me pilot. another piloting check. All right, all right. Oh, that's a 24. So. Um, so you did lose a little bit of time on the corkscrew, but when you mm -hmm. get here, uh, you come in at a speed that some people might describe as recklessly fast. Um, as people are starting to slow down, you are still holding the accelerator and you get a couple of positions before picking on the brakes and then nailing the apex through both of these turns. Um, so you wind up in this easier turn, which kind of widens a little bit, but then narrows down into another hard stop. But you're you're not going fast enough that you need to necessarily make a reflex save here, but uh, go ahead and make, uh, well, actually <clears throat> what happens is somebody tries to get a little bit happy and they attempt to uh, it looks like they might try to cut you off. So I will need you to make a sense motive check. Ooh, ooh. Ooh, it's only a 15 on the sense motive. Okay. Uh, you fail to anticipate exactly what kind of motion that they want to make, and mm -hmm. they end up swinging directly in front of you, causing you to, to need to apply the brake a little bit more than you would like to. Um, let's see... I need you to make a reflex save in order to try and recover from this setback. Yeah. Ooh, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. That it that you can crit on saves. <laughs> can you? That is a natural, yes, that is a natural 20. Oh. <laughs> what does critting on a save do for you exactly? Uh, it's automatic success or failure. <laughs> oh, sure. Yeah. No, you, you, you passed it with flying colors either way. So... Uh, you, you notice uh, people can see on the screen as this this jerk swings right in front of Kaylin. Maybe it was their intent to to try and and throw her off or, or knock her out of the race because they identified her as a threat. But uh, def despite the fact that she slowed down, she was still able to rotate the bike in place and invent her own turn apex to get through the rest of it, uh, mostly uh, unscathed. Woo! Nice. So, hey, that was a dirty uh, move. <laughs> rocketing out of that Trick. turn, um, you find yourself uh, face to face with this uh, pair of skyscrapers that go up directly through the middle of the course. Um, you know that the course splits into kind of like a, a figure eight sort of situation, and mm -hmm. you can brave it with the rest of the pack. However, you do know that right around here, if you uh, kick the brakes and then accelerate into a uh, like a wheelie sort of thing. You can actually ramp up into a narrow tunnel that goes between the two buildings. It's a bit of a risky maneuver, but if you do it, you would gain a significant amount of time. Oh so, man, we have we have established that uh, that Kaylin is about these risky maneuvers with the with the flybys and the crazy Ivan and all that jazz. So um, let's do it. Let's go for it. Okay. What do you want from me? Uh, so the maneuver to ramp up is tough. So please make a piloting check for me. All right, all right. Fingers crossed. That's a 22. That is just a pass. I made that very difficult, and you just did it. So uh, on, on the spotlight monitor, you can watch as Kaylin's uh, hover bike slows down and then suddenly rockets forward the front end of it. Uh, lifting up and then nailing the guardrail, which sends the, the hover bike careening towards one of the buildings. However, it goes straight into a, a tunnel. It's kind of like a secret shortcut almost. And she's able to just secret go tunnel. straight through <laughs> this section without having to interact with any of the racers on the lower level. 
Uh, oh, you, sus girl. you suspect that you might have gained about three seconds using that maneuver. Nice. Holy crap. I passed a couple people. Oh, you passed I'm a sure. few people. Yeah. <laughs> pissed at me. Um, what was Ninden going to say? Uh, just, uh, you know. Oh, Gur, did you see where she's. Where did she go? <laughs> I have no clue. You, you and then she flies out the other side of the tunnel, landing in front, narrowly in front of somebody else. Kind and mouse. And then everyone goes, woo! Pause. Mouse kind of like My kicks shoulders. at your shoulder and is like, she's there! She's there! <laughs> Jumping up and down, Mouse is like jostled around. Hey, hey! <laughs> I only have one hand to hold on to you with. <laughs> oh, because of the big foam thing, I guess. Yeah, it. yeah. <laughs> um, it actually, at this point, Minden, uh, you notice that your comm unit goes off. You barely catch it uh, because it vibrates. Oh. Um, I, I gingerly reach into my pocket and pull out my comm unit. Uh, you see that you've received a message from Tendon. Uh, it says that uh, he's free for a couple days at this point. So if you want to head over to the Radiant Cathedral, he would happily show you around uh, Don Shore. Oh. Whenever you're ready to show up. Yeah. Uh, Ninden, no, Ninden throws Mouse from his shoulders and dashes <laughs> off. No. Um, uh, he, you can, you, you can he, probably stay and watch the rest of the race. I was, yes, no, I, that was a joke. Um, <laughs> I, uh, Ninden smiles to himself and tucks his comm unit away. All right. Um, so, uh, from this point, uh, after this daring maneuver, uh, the racetrack disappears into a tunnel, uh, abruptly forming a sharp turn that requires a bit of finesse to find the apex. Uh, it widens out into a partially embanked turn uh, to encourage acceleration uh, right afterwards. So it's kind of a tricky turn. Go ahead and give me another piloting check, please. Will do. Is anyone else starting to suspect that uh, Seth is playing too much Apex, by the way? He's saying the word a lot. No, that is a 21. No, it, <laughs> Apex no, is a word in racing, yeah. Yeah, it is. It is. I'm just. I was. Look, I Apex. Apologize. It's a word in the English language. I'm allowed to use it. Honestly, I'm just surprised he knows this much about racing. Oh, I love racing. I know a little bit. I didn't expect it from Seth either. Oh. Oh, man. Um, but we'll I get into that later. We'll get yeah. into that later. Ta table talk. Table talk. Um. Okay, yeah, you're able to sufficiently uh, weave between the other racers, and and uh, you don't you don't necessarily uh, make any headway in terms of overtaking anybody else, uh, but you do manage to stay tightly within this pack. Um, you you suspect that the people that you're surrounded by right now are all of like the actually good racers. Um, right, and, a lot of the other people are people who just showed up because they had some sort of official race on their record from long ago. Uh, yeah, but these are the real that, competitors. Yeah, you figure that the people behind you probably lost uh, their uh, uh, probably lost their races, but they were still able to show up because that's all that they needed to do was was be there. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so. Um, All right, uh, you are able to, to sufficiently weave your way through here. Now, uh, coming up is the straightaway that leads to another corkscrew going up a, um. uh, a skyscraper. This one is a little bit steeper, so it's a little bit more challenging, uh, but I will need another sequence of piloting checks. All right, here goes. First one, ooh, that's only a 16. You just make it. Second He's one is a 20. 27. Uh huh. All right. And the third the one way. is a 20. Uh oh. Okay. Oh. Your turn is starting to look a little bit sloppy towards the end. Please make me a reflex check. Oh no. Oh, I'm not. <gasps> oh no. Let's use that reroll. Can I use the reroll? Yeah, I think so. You have your reroll. Yeah, right, use it. Three roll. Uh, 19 okay. on the reflex save. Now please reroll that final piloting check. 24. Just made it. Yeah. Okay. Oh. <laughs> so climbing up this very tall, uh, this very tall uh, corkscrew, you end up looking down basically above the entire city of Arl. Anybody who's watching this monitor 
uh, or the monitors of the racers uh, in your area, which they should be, are treated with a view of the entire city. And the, the simulation aspects don't just end at the racing. Uh, it's the, the, the visuals are, are absolutely breathtaking. And this is the highest moment of spectacle of the race. Uh, people who play this game or are familiar with the circuit call this very last moment of the race the, the cannon. It is a banked turn that comes down from the highest point of the race all the way down to the starting point, which means that you end up traveling at ridiculous speeds. Uh, you know a trick that would allow you to essentially drift down the side of this banked turn, counter steering against the forces in order to shoot out at almost the, the speed that, uh, the, the, uh, akin to terminal velocity. So I would so like you, a, I'm sorry. It's a, it's a Mario Kart maneuver then. Yeah. Uh, this is a blue spark <laughs> maneuver. <laughs> All right. Um, right. Nothing to be a piloting to pull it off. Yes, one last piloting check. All right, all right. Everybody cross your fingers. <laughs> this is going to be way cool. <gasps> oh! My oh. Really oh. Good. 31 piloting as I come down this. Good job crossing yeah, your fingers, that's everyone. That's 20, folks. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Woo! Okay, okay, I'll let you so. talk now. <laughs> Yeah, um, the spotlight is definitely on Kaylin as she just perfectly, like a work of art, uh, her her uh, hover bike uh, turns sideways. It's sliding down the side. Um, she maintains the momentum all the way through. And right as the embanked turn starts to, to, to ease off into the straightaway, she kicks on the accelerator and counter steers hard immediately leveling out and straightening. So she fires like a bullet towards the finishing line. However, at the very last second, surprising just about everyone, another bike goes right past her, finishing the race with less than a second ahead of her. Ah, what? Ah. Oh. <clears throat> Who oh, was crap. that? Who was that mysterious biker? Actually, that mysterious mask at the uh, at that moment, the uh, screen uh, displays winner, McKayle. That brat. The very person who said he wasn't going to enter the race. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, well. um, but uh, as everything uh, at that point. The audience is like confused, like they're cheering, but the, it's definitely kind of like a weird feeling uh, because they're like, why the hell is he even in this race? He already has a team. Um, There's probably some some uh, speculation going on about what's, what he yes. could be playing does, out here. How does Caitlin react to this exactly? Uh, she's amused, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, do you take do you uh, take your VR headset off? Yeah, yeah. She takes the VR headset off and looks around uh, for for Michaela. Um, what you actually see is standing next to you are two of the algorithmic compositions uh, team members who were standing next to you, anticipating to give you the the, the reward, uh, but they're looking around confused as well. And uh, emerging from the back, yeah, you do see, in fact, Michele uh, rises up and, and rounds his way over towards you and the members of, uh, of Algorithmic Compositions. And he just kind of looks at them and says, she's your best bet. If you don't go with her, you're idiots. And then he starts to walk off. Hey. He's so hey, wait cool. Up. She <laughs> he goes after him. He he stops. Uh, he, he, the way he moves is kind of like you imagine an actual alien might. Uh, very purposeful and delicate steps, but he stops and just kind of slowly turns his head to look at you. I thought you weren't racing. He just kind of 
smirks. This one's a little bit more obvious, and he says, see you in the race. And then he heads out. Hmm. 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 Do I have these these two, um... You want me to beat them up? (laughs) Algorithmic compositions, uh, guys standing here still? Yeah, no, they, uh, they they look at each other confused and they just kind of shrug. They're like, well, we're not going to... They're, they're not going to offer the ability to race for them because Michele is with a, another team, Futura 7. Like, they don't... Mm-hmm. He doesn't need he doesn't need this, so they're like, yeah. Uh, congratulations, he announces over the, the, the speaker to our to our winner, Kaylin Ward. Uh, they hand you a certificate indicating that you are now going to officially race on the Burning Ring 37 circuit here nice. in Chroma. Ooh. Nice. Awesome. There you go. Um, Celebratory drinks. Woo! <laughs> yeah, we're all cheering off on the side, clapping, pumping fists. Are they doing like a live... Like, are they doing an announcement on the big screen or are they just like handing me a, a prize? Oh yeah, the, the elite... The, the esports scene is alive and well here, uh, and they're they're broadcasting off to the info sphere, uh, so people are definitely watching this. Ah, in that in that case, um, you know when they hand a thing, Kalen, Kalen will smile and say, "Thanks." You know, if I was gonna get beat by anybody, getting beat by uh, Michaela is nothing to nothing to sneeze at, and I look forward to seeing him in a real race. <laughs> You noticed that when you were talking to him, he did have little like readouts and video screens on the inside of his little uh, uh, fishbowl helmet. And mm-hmm. you think he might actually be watching that wherever he is, uh, just on Aww. his own. <laughs> so classy. <laughs> Halen's a good sport. Mouse is good. not. <laughs> I was gonna say, the Mouse would have. we learn at arcades, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Mouse would have lost it, I think, if that was her in that position. You mother! Oh my god. god, she would have leapt for his throat. <laughs> um, once, and then, you know, me back up with these guys once they're done sticking cameras in her face. Mm-hmm. Um, Harald has two big foam fingers that he's waving around. Now, are they real, or are they just like, <laughs> did he make them? Harald winks. Oh, <laughs> Ninden has a mouse with a foam finger attached that he's waving around. <laughs> Light as a feather, stiff as a board. <laughs> All right, did you guys want to go to one of the places in the Holodrome to to get some refreshments? Yeah, let's get yeah. let's get some drinks. Celebratory you know, yeah. drinks. We won. Um, was there a monetary uh, prize along with the... No. So right now, all that that was was you securing the position to to race for algorithmic compositions. Uh, the race itself is not for a few weeks. So, uh, but when you but when you do compete, uh, that's when you'll be able to to win some creds. Nice. So yeah, your friend. In the meantime, very cool. Yeah. So- yeah. Well- Kaylin, I I didn't know that you could race like that. <laughs> Well, it isn't a skill I've used in a while. When you're working for a sec- top secret corporate espionage team, they generally uh, frown well, well, on. There was that. There was that one time where we had to drive really quickly away from the compound. There was, and it got put. It got put to use, just not publicly. Uh, there was a loop de loop somewhere in there. Guru walks up and just puts a big, big hand on your shoulder and just laughs. He's like, oh, no wonder I lost so badly. Ha, ha, ha. He, like, squeezes a little bit tighter than he maybe should. Uh, <laughs> like, ha, you know, ha, ha, why didn't you tell me you were that good? <laughs> well, you know, girl, I always need somebody who actually knows how to fix the things I break. And I'm just, you know, you got me there, so. Right. so Gert doesn't know what to say. He just blushes. <laughs> um, oh, so in- you with his hand. <clears throat> anyway, that should put my face up big enough that uh, Pinnacle doesn't dare shoot me in the street. So. We'll see. There's a lot of work to be done. The rest of us aren't really famous, but you should definitely mention uh, the our ship. You know, next time you get first place. <laughs> 
that 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 statement kind of hangs in the air because technically she got second, but <laughs> I'm calling it first place. <laughs> she won the thing, okay? She won yeah. the thing. <laughs> um. So, uh, Ninden, you receive another message on your comm unit from uh, Tenden asking, uh, "Are you free now?" Oh. Um, yes, Ninden completely forgot about the text message in all the hollow blue and excitement. But, uh, yeah, Ninden will shoot back, uh, yes, I am free. I can head over soon. Ah, oh, damn autocorrect. N- Ninden, who are you, who are you talking to? <laughs> oh, um, what? You were just saying what you were texting out loud. <laughs> Are you talking to uh, your brother? <laughs> ah, I thought Ninden is exactly uh, the sort of person who actually does that. <laughs> oh, totally. Uh, mm, yes, sorry. I, uh, I've been trying to stop that. But uh, yes, no, that was actually my brother. Um, he said he's finally free and that I should head over soon. Well, that's fantastic. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'll probably... Uh, let's get drinks and then... We can, uh, I can head over to the lion crawler. All right. So you all enjoy another round of drinks. And uh, uh, it occurs to you, Ninden, that maybe maybe it might be nice to have uh, Gur help you find the lion crawler station. You're not 100% certain that you know exactly where it is. Yeah. Um, yes. So... Uh... Hey, Gur, would you, um, I think I'm ready to head over to the line crawler. Would you like to, um, I don't know. We could just walk along and, um. Hold hands, <laughs> gaze into each other's oh, eyes. Um, 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 of course. <laughs> yeah, Mal ships it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Mouse is alone there in that. Yeah, um, you know, just so, uh. I I know where I'm going, um, and I don't get. Of lost. course. Oh, actually, actually Kevin and I are pretty familiar with the station. Maybe we can point show you. And Mouse way like oh. jabs him in the rib, in the ribs with his el- with her elbow. The Kayla elbow leans back with her drink. Mouse has this under control for once. <laughs> the elbow goes through her arm's torso, but he he gets the point. <laughs> but yeah, you guys can you guys can hang out and chat a little bit more before you go if you want to. If you guys have anything, you... okay. No. All right. So, uh, Ninden and uh, and uh, Gur uh, take back to the streets of Chroma. Um, probably both high off of their respective activities at the Hollow Drome. It's a pretty awesome place uh, overall. But uh, you're able to make it back to the Lion Crawler Station just fine, and uh, you know it will take you back to Donshore. And you're you're not you're not fool enough to not know how to get to the Radiant Cathedral. So you can probably take it from there once you get to Dawn Shore. Yeah. They have tons of signs up for tourists. It's like trying to not find the airport. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's always signs. Um, Ninden will turn to Gur. Thank you. Um, I just really kind of wanted company while I walked over here. Um, and yeah. So, oh, of course, I understand. It's the city is. Uh, he kind of looks around. Uh, overwhelming place. Yes, it's a bit loud for my taste, but uh, yeah. Well, uh, I should be able to meet up with you uh, fairly soon. I'll stay in touch. Uh, you know, keep your comm unit on and all that. Um, and oh, thanks for all your help these past uh, these past few days. Uh, I'm looking a little disappointed that he's not going to get to meet Tendon. Says, "Oh, oh, okay, yeah, absolutely, sure. You, uh, you take it easy, and uh, you know, if there's anything, any, you need any help with anything, you just shoot us a message. We'll come running." And he's like doing finger guns the entire time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, excellent. Um, so as Ninden turns to to go to the Lion Crawler Station, he doesn't quite notice that his comm unit runs out of battery and powers off. Um. But something he can recharge later. It's not that big of a deal. Uh, Gur, however, if you want to rejoin the rest of the party, uh, 
you know your way back to the holodrome, but you thought you spied like a an alleyway on the way that might allow you to avoid some of the noise and some of the prying eyes, but you know, Kurt it's will also absolutely go that way. He's got social <laughs> anxiety. <laughs> can you make me a perception check? Hey, of course I can't. <laughs> <laughs> A seven, oh, 17, oh, unnaturally high. That's not bad. That is not actually bad. Um, let me, that, that might be, that might be good enough where I actually have to roll. Hold on a second. Curse is his imminent oh. demise. Okay, no, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> so you, you make your, you start to make your way down uh, the alleyway. Uh, it's a little quieter here. You know, this is where uh, garbage tends to be, you know, like the, the, the break spots for, various people in the restaurants and other establishments that are on the, the street side of these tall metallic geometric buildings. Um, however, nobody is in this alley at this particular moment. Uh, what you do notice though, is as you start to approach one of the, the outlets, uh, two men in black and silver armor with helmets covering their entire faces round around the corner with uh, rifles in their hands. Oh, hell no. So what's wrong with taking the back streets? This. <laughs> this is what's wrong exactly with this. <laughs> Her immediately goes for his, um, his hand cannon. You hear someone from behind you say, I wouldn't do that if I were you. It turns around slowly. You see five more men in similar armor. You've seen this armor before. Um, oh, oh, yes. And uh, one of the men uh, steps forward from the rest of the group and uh, takes his helmet off. And he says, Garuk Gortooth, I'm here to take you home. Oh, no. And that is where we will stop for today. Oh, no. <laughs> no! And I'm going to oh, miss dear. it. <laughs> oh my gosh i think um for for our um our audience um Gur, why are we all freaked out by the fact that it, that a drow just showed up in your life i mean they've read all the standby the history yeah i was gonna say if you if you haven't read the the backstory it's because Gur used to belong to a drow house on a poste poste however you want to yeah. say it <clears throat> yeah that's, I think they, that is I the quickened version of it. I think that if you were to ask them, they would probably say that you still do belong to them. Oh, I'm sure they do believe that. They would indeed. <laughs> We've been spending all this time worrying about Pinnacle finding us. <laughs> so, yeah, Should have been we... worried about the drow. Drow on the sun? Hang drow on. Drow on the sun? What the heck? <laughs> Thought I was saying. Right under Pinnacle's nose. <laughs> So yeah, that's uh, that's it for this week. Uh, so next week, uh, we need to talk shop here um, because next week is Mother's Day. Uh, I will not be running a game uh, next yeah. week. Uh, do Are we going to be running a game on Sunday? Um, if I can, I'm going to try and put together a group for, um, I'll pick out one of the society scenarios I haven't run yet. Um, I'm running for those of this group that are here um, and I'll see if I can't fill in the slots um, with other, uh, you know, people from our little other interesting our network, people. other interesting people. Yeah. There'll be interesting people here playing Starfinder Society next week. <laughs> um, I'll run it. <laughs> so the week after uh, Mother's Day, uh, which is going to be the weekend of the 19th, the 19th. Uh, we will be back on the show, but Tom will not, uh, which is why Ninden has uh, stepped out of the story for the time being. However, we will have our first guest appearance. You guys. Ooh. Oh, Who is the guest? Snap. Gosh darn it, I want to know. <laughs> I'm going to withhold that information until the days leading up to the episode on the 19th. But I assure you that it is very exciting. I'm very excited and I don't even know, so. I'm very <laughs> I, I do apologize to um, all of our viewers, uh, all, all of my Ninden fans out there, I'm sure there are hundreds of you, um, <laughs> that I, I am missing episodes here and there. It is because of some longstanding obligations. Oh, wow. um, I'm a music teacher, and I, I 
am also in some like community based uh groups and for whatever reason all of those concerts land on sundays <laughs> um so, which uh was never an issue but um so yeah. i will once once concert season is over i'll be much more regular all right so we yeah. actually have a short episode today you're welcome everyone trying to catch up <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I think I think that's it for today's episode. Thank you, everybody, for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you again, uh, you know, in the future at some point. <laughs> Take care yeah. of yourselves, everyone.